Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back to another episode of the Need to Know Podcast. What you need to know, when you need to know, the Need to Know Podcast. And today, we have a who you need to know. But before hey. we get into that person, let's get to our illustrious crew. To the right of me, Savon. What's up, baby? What's going on, my guy? How you doing? Uh, blessed and How, how you feeling? Yo, the internet really loves your t-shirt game. I ain't gonna lie can to I you. Say, can I say the comment, please? Oh, can please, I say please. <laughs> please? Be okay, careful. I'm sorry, Same guys. While you pull up the comment, I'm gonna let <laughs> you know. I have <laughs> never noticed your t-shirts. You don't and that, that might make me a hater, <laughs> yo. but now that I'm looking, <laughs> yo, you got that drip, bro. I ain't gonna lie. How long we been doing this uh, podcast? But <laughs> how long we been doing this podcast, Avon? But you know what it is. You you're a person that cares about shit and don't care at the same time. <laughs> I don't know what you care about this all the time. This you know good. what I'm saying? I didn't know how meticulous you were with your t-shirt selection yeah, until men started fawning <laughs> over you in like, our we'll comments. Be, we'll be talking about something related on the pod that week, and he'll wear like a graphic tee with it. But anyway, we we have on our recent reel. I won't say his name. You guys can go see it. Yeah, don't quote him. He said he commented. There's a real comment. I be wanting to go through the screen and rip Alex shirts off. Tough. Now that's flagrant. Yeah, now that's now that's flagrant. Nah, hey, just you a sex symbol. Just admit no, it. No, I'm not. I, we we are sex symbols. We're a very good looking podcast. I love the fact that you have been the one to like get us to different demographics. Bridge the gap. I love it. Because we got to go real far if niggas want to rip your shirt off. Hey, don't assume his orientation. Yeah. I don't know. You're not putting that on him? Yes. But there's a feeling there. I'm not going to lie to him. I'm energy. taking all fans. I don't give a fuck. So salute them. Be careful. My all fault. Right. But all right. Never anyway. Mind. I mean, I'm not taking y'all. I mean, like, anyway. if you want to support me, I'm here. Right. Okay. Anyway. Good clean up. Hello, guys. It's me, Reggie. I feel very blessed to be here. And Always. I'm very excited about this episode. We have a special one. I say that every week, but this is low-key going to be extra special. Oh, my God. Extra special. And as always, I'm a... The Paco Rabone Poppy, never alone. I'm always with the posse. Facts. But man, today, we are joined by, oh man. Mind you, we were supposed to make this happen for a while. We yes. were. Yeah. We definitely <laughs> were. I don't want to call her a DJ. But I don't either. I, right? I, don't, I feel like a title would box her in. Mm, and the reason we're called the Need to Know Podcast is because we like to keep it I was gonna say we like to keep broad? it wide, but pause. Yeah. We like to keep it broad, okay? We don't want to keep it. Yeah, we like to words. keep it broad. Thank you so much. And so for me to sit here and try to label her, to uh, title her, yeah. or say she's one thing, I would be doing her a disservice. I would be doing her career, her Absolutely. work, um, everything that she's building, because she's in the process of building. And honestly, yeah. I. I love that shit. Me too. I'm a fan. Okay, guys. I know. I'm so sorry. I hope we're not making you uncomfortable. <laughs> but it's is. very, very rare that we get to sit down with people we're fans of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And peers. So. Y'all, y'all are really slicing it, but I, I like it. Nah, we got you. And listen, if you don't know who we're talking about yet, yeah, we are joined by Nyla Simone. Ooh. Yes, yes, indeed. Oh, Y'all studio. We got, we got people in the building. Please you, you, clap, you, it you, up, clap it up. Clap it up. Clap it up. I'm so happy to be on this podcast. I've been reaching out. I don't know which camera is mine. I've been reaching out to these people for two years. And okay, then, she's not lying. She's I, not and lying. then I recently just started yeah. applying pressure. Like, all right, y'all, nah, for real. Yeah, she got on. Then mind. I peeped. They got Elliot. I'm like, oh, I'm never getting on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I'm never getting because I hit y'all before Elliot. I'm like, oh my god, like, she you know what? She no, she did. and and I also want to salute you. I want to shout you out and give you your flowers and give you your credit. Our first annual, it wasn't even an annual thing at that oh, time. At that time. Our yeah. very we first mixer. Shit. We were just figuring shit out. We was like, yo, yeah. I hope she wants to be a part of it. Our very first mixer, you came, you played the music, you provided the vibes for us. Mm -hmm. That was a very, very big deal. Again, I'm going to tell you why it's such a big deal for me a little bit later. But I do want to thank you for that. Oh my because God. it gave yes. us a sense of... Holy shit, like <laughs> we're 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 arriving in yeah. places. You know what I'm saying? So legit, thank you. No, we were like, oh my god, is, is not like gonna say yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that is like that is actually ridiculous to hear. I'm a fan of you guys too. Doing that yeah. podcast was or that party yeah. mixer. Mixer. Yeah. Doing that mixer was definitely like a, a short thing. Yeah. But, but it's funny that. it's funny you asked that we if we knew or not. No, hell no, Nyla. First off, let's be honest, right? Just, New York is known for not showing love. <laughs> Right, that's true. That's and not, yeah. respectfully, me and Savon, before we brought the beautiful Reggie with us, we've been doing this podcast like five years. I'm five. not gonna lie, <laughs> it's actually Reggie who put me on to you guys because I met her through uh, Armin. Yeah, you see that? I love that. Yeah. You see so that? maybe I that. that. I love yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. that. Yes, give my credit. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you I, I was like, guys, like, do you think we should ask Nyla? I remember I said that. You she, did. Yes. She did. She, she did. certainly did. So yeah, I do want to thank you for pulling up. Of course. And again, one of the reasons why this is such a big deal for me is because I'm I'm really a fan. Like I'm a fan of this space. And when no, legit, like. 
So I like to watch, you know, my peers. I like to watch the space. I'm a podcast guy. The way that you are in music, Alex, he's in music. Reggie, she's in music. Like my introduction was through music, but my core is like media, radio, podcast. Like that's really how I wanted to get in this space. Yeah. And so that's how I got introduced to you through podcast. Got you it. know, I know you do your thing with the music. You're fucking phenomenal. You're great. Um, I saw you on TV too. I'm like, damn, this girl, she's killing <laughs> shit. Wait, you know what I'm no, I'm I sorry. got you. I got you because I'm a journalist. Oh, I yeah. have to oh. do my research and take my notes. I'm okay. sorry. We're gonna do. We're gonna do this whole praising thing for <laughs> five more minutes. All right. <laughs> so the, the woman to the to the right of me, she was nominated for DJ of the Year at the BET Hip Hop Awards in 2022. Mm. She's oh, a host nice. of the We Need to Talk podcast. So I almost said we need to know. Sorry. <laughs> featured on the breakfast club you probably seen her there you know just a little show you know she's a great dj stays booked and busy and she was number 25 on complex's hip-hop media list that sent Ooh. the internet into a frenzy um she's a host of rotation roundtable on amazon and i just mm, want, i just mm, want, mm. i just had to write that down yeah. i didn't even mean to say it all like that but i just need it for my notes because you do so much how do you keep up with it? Because like we can barely keep up with it. Right. Um, how do I keep up with it? I mean, I have no choice. I'm trying to build. <laughs> She's like, you how know? do I do this? I, I don't really have a choice. But I mean, they kind of all go hand in hand, which is what I love about it. So mm -hmm. it's like the discussions I'm having at Rotation, I'm having these same arguments with Envy and Charlemagne. Oh. Or I'm having these same arguments with the Need to Know podcast. Does, it, does it ever get repetitive then? Because you do so many different shows I, I don't feel about like it, like current events. Because everybody has different POV yeah. and it's like iron sharpening iron. So it's like, they're just different perspectives. Like on Rotation, I'm talking with Speedy and Gabe and Rob, but they're closer to my age group. Mm -hmm. And then... We all we obviously have very different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So like you know, Gabe is Puerto Rican. He grew <laughs> up in New York. I'm yeah. black, and I grew up in Maryland. But my family's from the South. Mm -hmm. Speedy, heavy Queens, heavy bias. <laughs> <laughs> very, <laughs> he's very New York. Right yeah, here. and then <clears throat> Charlemagne, same thing. You know, older from the South. Envy. It's just everybody has a yeah. different. A different uh, contribution, different people. Yeah, and it makes for a very like colorful conversation. Yeah. I've noticed that with us too, because yeah. we're like very different. So yeah. I love that. Yeah. But yeah. And you realize in this industry, like, you can't stop. Listen, there's stop. certain jobs where you can maybe take a break here and there. Yeah. But you start to realize, especially mm -hmm. with like retention rates now, how do, <laughs> if you want to continue to go to where you're going, right, you got to keep working, right? And yeah. because like yeah. people are in just so many different pockets. Like some people are on Twitch, some people are on YouTube, some people are on mm. podcasts, some people watch TV still, <laughs> some people listen to radio. So it's like, I got to meet people where they're at. Yeah. So I, like, I want you to, whatever your favorite medium is, I want to be somewhere next to it so you can hear me too. See, mm. and that's what us young people bring into radio. Yeah. I, I don't know yes. if you know, I work in Sirius now and it has fulfilled my soul. <laughs> But going into it, I was a little scared. <laughs> Why? Because you know how people our age make radio sound. They make it sound so prehistoric. It is. So yeah, outdated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It right? does sound like that, yeah. It's yeah. kind of, you know, but you start to realize like this is kind of way that you could kind of, you know, chisel out a lane for us. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't want to get you guys in trouble, but mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. do you feel that a little bit when you're in these buildings, like you guys both, like, oh, this is a little, you know old like it's a it's mm. an og medium of hip-hop or you're like no like i love it here like it's fresh it feels fresh still oh, it, or no mm. you don't have to actually you don't have to i don't want to get anybody in trouble no, i don't mind being honest about it um i think it's not just radio i think it's a lot of companies like when oh, i worked yeah. at the source magazine it felt very prehistoric yeah. I'm, I'm like begging them to get a snapchat so i can document yeah. things there and then when you go to radio it's the same thing but i think it's just that like like I said earlier, you want to meet people on all these different platforms, but radio was just so used to being the dominating yeah. medium that they don't feel the need to meet people where they're at in other places. Yeah. But you want to know why I love radio? I realize that there are people that need programming. Mm -hmm. Like we're in the everybody needs programming. No, but see, it's I don't even know what that means. See, but <laughs> no, like think you about do it. know what it means. You do well, it. Yeah. Uh, you guys are doing yeah. it right yeah. now, like yeah. curating. Yes. Pretty much. Okay. Explain it. Explain it. Yeah. Explain it further before I go. Yeah. I want to. Everybody needs mean. programming. Because what I meant by it is right. You okay. know, now when you hop in your car, you can go to your iPhone for music, right? You don't have to. When we was coming up, no, you had to cut on the radio. Yeah. yeah. Right. I do feel like there is a a large amount of people that like to get into the car and mm -hmm. have things programmed for them. Mm -hmm. And working in radio has made me realize that, like, you know what? No, actually, there's actually <laughs> a pretty big market for people mm -hmm. that still enjoy this. Some yeah. people can't pick music. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I mean, okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I would say 
as far as programming, like our demo mm -hmm. i think we're more hands-on with it like we yeah. don't mind sitting and picking our favorite joints adding it to a playlist x y and z yeah. now my mom she's probably not gonna do all that she's yeah. gonna like the record that she hears on the radio so i think yeah. it, it's just i think it depends but yeah i i i like radio it's yeah. it's really really fun and i think it's just about creating a good environment while you're there well, what's yeah. that been like for you being on like the biggest radio you know platform in our culture the breakfast club like obviously the breakfast club they went through a transition uh angela yee she does her own show now it's charlemagne it's envy they're bringing the people on that they believe in the the people that they trust you know and you're one of those folks like you're a staple now on the breakfast club oh my god which when you think about it like that's really a thing you get like you're a staple on the breakfast club these days yeah um so for you how does that feel like what what was was that even a goal? Was that something that you even wanted to do? No, because I didn't think it was a thing, to be honest. Like, it wasn't like I applied for that or anything like that. But I will say, you know, I got my start in radio working under Angie Martinez. And I worked for her for about, like, three years from intern to working for free to her personal assistant. And within that, that really taught me, like, everything in radio, how to produce, how to do packets, mm. how to interview. Mm -hmm. How the after you know post it really taught me everything so even working with the breakfast club it, when i was interning and working for free i was under angie but i worked with everybody in the building except for breakfast club Same. but Ooh. i was doing two to five a.m and then i would mm. i would oh sleep God. there and then run the boards for pro style who mm -hmm. had 10 a.m to 2 p.m mm -hmm. but that's how i got connected with charlemagne envy um because i would be there sleeping or like reading and like uh, i was reading asada and then Charlemagne's like, who's reading this book? And then we started <laughs> bonding over books. And then, like, you know, our relationship developed like that. But I don't know. I can't say, like, yeah, I always knew I was going to be on The Breakfast Club. Like, it's Club. on my vision board. Yeah, that was never on the vision board. I'm just <laughs> thankful to have, like, people who actually believe in me. But you want to know how I know you're not lying about that? That's powerful. Yeah. I know one of your homegirls. Her name is uh, Meta. Oh, my God. How do you know Meta? I used to work with Meta at Adidas, <laughs> and this is back when, Wow. Yeah, this is back when I'm in college, going to school for- I don't we, like this. This feels like some non <laughs> 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 That's a compliment, though. We got it. Yeah. You probably got a couple more in the top, too. I told you on Mike, there's another name I was going to give you. And oh it's my. funny, Meta used to salute how hard I was working, because I think me and Savon had just started the podcast. Mm -hmm. Like I was at the re like the last remnants of Adidas, yeah. and she was mentioning to me like, "Yo, I got a home girl. We from DC area, and she going hard." And then she messaged you up, and it's so great to see a full circle moment now. Like, wow, wow. that's actually really crazy. Fuck wow. my, I know if it's gonna fuck you up. Yeah, I, I'm, oh, like, I'm going away. What? That's crazy. And hey, look at us now. Yeah, it's 2023. Look at us go. It's funny because I wanted to ask you how you got your start and how you got your footing in this space, yeah. um, because a lot of people look at us, and when I say us, I mean you know, we're like that next wave, right? We're, we're, there's the OGs, there's the guard, yeah. there's the, mm -hmm. the Charlemagnes, there's the Ebros, there's the Elliot Wilsons, there's the Joe Buttons. Those guys that cemented, they never have to pick up a microphone again and they're good, yeah. right? Their legacy is there. Mm -hmm. And then there's folks like us, you know, where we're trying to build that. We're trying to get to a level to where we can have that impact and we can have that culture, um, that cultural impact. So my question was, how did you even get to this position because a lot of people look up and they see Nyla on the Brilliant Idiots. Mm -hmm. They see Nyla on the Breakfast Club. They see Nyla on with the Amazon deal. They see Nyla and it's just like, okay, maybe this happened overnight. And it's probably a little disheartening to you because I, I struggle with that. Like people see us with Elliot Wilson. They see yeah. us with Ish. They see us with whoever they see us with. And it's like, the fuck? Who is this nigga? And I'd be like, bro, do you know what we had to go through no, to I get did. to where we are? Like, no, I did. our little 2,000 views on YouTube, do you know what that <laughs> means to me, bro? Hey, we've been doing better. Oh, yeah. the, the crazy thing is, right, the oh, audio so numbers are amazing. Yeah, like, yeah, tens that's so of that, yeah, our yeah. audio numbers are amazing, but people don't see the audio numbers. Yeah. Right, they only right. see YouTube. Yeah. So when they go on YouTube yeah. and they're like... Yo, y'all niggas is ass, bro. <laughs> yeah. niggas I was like, do you know what it took for me to get you 1,500 <laughs> Yo, niggas here in 24 hours? That is hours? so funny. Yeah. I feel you 100% because on my podcast, We Need to Talk, I just started it 
a year ago. Congrats. And Ooh. thank you. And that's Congrats. a solo pod, right? It's a solo well, we'll pod. Yeah. But yeah. it's so hard to like really carry yeah. a show like that. So congrats. It's so been, strong. It's been hard as hell. But <laughs> <laughs> I just started monetizing and I just started getting numbers. Nice. Ooh, so like salute. some interviews, well, some clips will do like 50, but some are getting like 10K, 5K. Like this is my first time seeing like money in my, <laughs> my YouTube. I'm, 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 I'm like overwhelmed right now. But um <laughs> Do I have earnings? Like I'm overwhelmed right now. I, I really am and um because it's your own Because it's my own. Yes. And yeah. I guess to I wanna try to make it long story short. I've been in New York ten years, came here for college. Went to St. John's University. I was a computer science major because I went to a trade school when I was in high school in Maryland mm. for tech. Um, so my whole thing is, in the DMV area, there's mad like government jobs. So I'm like, oh, all right, yeah. I'm going to just get Makes a government sense. job, you know, be rich, find me a husband, have some kids. Cool. <laughs> that but, sounds nice. You know, right? Yeah. Now that shit is like nowhere near. But anyway. <laughs> but uh, you're doing great, Nyla. You're doing great, though. <laughs> but um, so I was doing like college radio just as like an outlet. And that's where I met Gabe. Salute to Gabe. Oh, I didn't know you guys been knew each other for Salute like that Gabe. long. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, his show was called... I think no genre. And then my show was called The Vibe. And then long story short, I went to St. John's because J. Cole went to St. John's and I was a big J. Cole stan. So I'm like, damn, hearing him talk about what he can do, you know, Big City Hustle, Jigga Diddy Russell, these are our heroes. Like, these are my heroes too. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I want to try to fulfill that same thing. Um, so yeah, so then I think my, my junior year, I studied abroad, came back. And then Angie Martinez had dropped her book, mm. and J. Cole wrote the forward for her book. So because I he wrote the book. forward, she came to St. John's in honor of him writing the forward. So she let two people interview him. The two people she let interview her was me and Gabe. Wow. What the f- Look now. Wait. Look now. Look, now. Look, now. Wait. Look at the alignment. Wait, I'm really- what? Wow. Now Gabe is doing it on the radar. How yeah, did you not notice? On it? With, I didn't yeah. notice part. With, with the, and, and again, yeah. let, let me let me clear some. Wait, Gabe, yeah, clean Cole? it up, Gabe. <laughs> we <laughs> love you. Clean it up. Okay. Yeah, I got I gotta let the cat know because we always yeah, said that. Yeah. No, 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 no. But like he that. don't know it. Let my oh, man okay, get it Gabe, up. We love you, Rob. The whole squad, we love you. <laughs> it's great to see this. Like legit. Legit. I love that. So you and Gabe, y'all connected in college. That's crazy to see y'all now have an Amazon deal. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We, we interned together. Um, but then I graduated because he's a year younger than me. So then I graduated yeah. and then they tried to like kick me out the building because you have to have like college credit in order mm -hmm. to intern. But I had became friends with like the janitor, the front desk lady. Yeah. I had became friends with everybody. So mm -hmm. everybody just let me through the doors. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so then I would go up there like, Angie, you need help with anything? You know, you want coffee? You want this? Like whatever. And um, while I was there, that's when I actually started learning how to DJ because I just wanted to make income but I wanted to still be around like what was going on. Mm -hmm. So I like the culture. I, mm -hmm. So I would like pick up gigs. Um, yeah, I, I like dedicated my whole life just to that radio station. Wow. Even when I was still in college, I took all remote classes and worked from the station. I only, cause you know, when you're an intern, you can only clock like 40 hours max. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would be in there like a hundred hours, yeah. but I would just, you know, only clock my appropriate times, but still just work from there. Cause I just wanted to be Rounded. in the mix and involved yeah. and help however I can. Because honestly, like you don't see jobs like that. Mm -mm. Like, mm -hmm. especially not in Maryland. I never saw a job like that. So mm -hmm. I, it just seemed unreal. And I was just too close to let it go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're right yeah. in, the, you're literally mm -hmm. in the building. I yeah. feel that. So, and DJ is one of those skills that. that they kind of get you the bigger role a little quicker, right? Or they can. It did because for me. of opportunity. Networking, networking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because of opportunity though, right? Somebody that can DJ as opposed to somebody that can't, mm -hmm. right? For sure. Yeah. I think like for me, I was always musically inclined because my dad um, was a producer and a rapper, but oh, not like famous or anything, but uh, like local. No, yes, he's famous. But he yeah. did it. Yeah. You know, he famous, famous, famous social construct, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but like there was... Like in every house we lived in, he always built a studio and my room always ended up being next to the studio. So I would always, you know, I could sleep through any type of loud music at this point, but oh, I was always musically inclined because of my parents. Yeah. And I was always like the kid burning CDs for the neighborhood. Same. I was mm. always <laughs> like, when I got to college, I was DJing parties off the ox court and off of YouTube. So it was only a matter of time before wow. I actually took the time to learn how to DJ. Like you got two tabs open, you blend a little, you the, know? Literally, <laughs> verbatim, that's yeah. what I was doing. So, um, so yeah, took a refund check, 
bought equipment, started DJing. Wow. The refund Not the refund I got a bad check. Oh my gosh. Bro, we lived off the refund check. Like, yo, the crazy thing, like, so I know a lot of hood niggas, they might not even be able to relate to this part right here, but there's a lot of niggas that can. Yeah. The refund check. Why you gotta say it like that? No, because I'm not gonna You gotta understand. Listen. Hood niggas go to college. No, they do. They certainly do. But there's a they certain demographic. Different. There's a certain demographic yeah. that I know listen to this podcast. Yeah. They don't know what the fuck a <laughs> refund check is. So yeah. the fact that you brought that up and yeah. to know like that's a relatable yeah. experience. Oh yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I like, go to Miami. Up. Everybody, I was like, nah, I'm gonna get this. Fuck, I went to Miami two years in a row. You being responsible? You went to. I went to Miami two years in a row. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. With your refund check? It's the, it's yeah. that was the old me. Okay, anyway, let's talk about that. Any regret? No, no, I, I definitely I don't regret anything okay. in my college years. I had like the most amazing college experience. Like I went to Syracuse University. Speedy's an alum, and yep. we like we're like so proud of him. But anyway, talking back to like your college experience, like. And one thing about me and Nyla, you know, we're not, I'm not going to act like we're like super close and stuff, but I knew her in real life. Like I, we met each other through like mutual friends. Yeah. So I follow her on Twitter and you have mentioned that, like just hearing you talk about your journey right now, reminded me of something you said, like you were just reflecting on how you moved here 10 years ago and you've accomplished so much, you, you know, no connections, you built your way up. You just told us that. But like, what were some of the hurdles and culture shocks? I think you said, cause you were like, one day I want to talk about it. Oh so my let's God. talk about it, Nyla. Okay. Yeah, Nyla, we need to talk. I don't know. Yeah. Cause you're, you're a great girl like from that. Maryland. <laughs> yeah, we, and then you were thrust here uh, okay. alone in New York. Like what, just tell us something, you know? Okay, culture shocks, there were so many. I, mm -hmm. I'll start with the music. Like when you go to college parties, here, they only want to play like reggae, soca, afrobeats, where like in Maryland, the only reggae, afrobeat, soca records you play is like everyone falls in love sometimes. Oh, y'all hate yourself. Action. <laughs> and, like, I feel like it's different there now. Though. It's <laughs> different now. It's good now. Though. After after Black Panther and everybody became <laughs> proud, I, I prom I'm not even That's like, no. after Black no, Panther. No, she she's talking about a while ago. Yeah, so. Now everybody is like, oh my God. And yeah. even me, I, I like it now too. But when I first moved here in 2013, like I. You were like, you where's know. the Gucci man? Where's the Jeezy? Oh, okay. Where's the like, I can't take That's this. That's so crazy, like thinking how that must feel because I'm just so used to it. So I can't imagine like not hearing all this and not having like mad like Dominicans everywhere. Like Yo. it's like different. It's so, so different. Yeah. Even down so, to the day. I be thinking these yeah. guys are black and they be Dominican and it fucking my head up. I know and black. That's, I know. That's, a, that's a whole deeper topic there. Yeah. 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 I know black, I Dominican. You want to know the funny? The, one of that's my very deeper. first girlfriends, that's right? How you can be. I looked at her, I'm like, oh, this is the black woman. Her last name was. Oh, oh. She was not black That's at black. all. Yeah. I promise you, and maybe we might have to bleep that. Yeah. But she was fully Dominican. <laughs> she was like my skin tone. Her family ain't speak English. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I promise you, I was fucked up. Off, but wait, it does. See, in New York, when we was coming up in parties, you know, we, we bumping vibes cartel. Yes. You know, we bumping like right. Punani, you Punani, nah. You know, all that. Yes. Oh, that's your vibe. You know. Yo, every time we. Like, no, you know, you got it. Yo, relax. Like, right. I have a like. We had like a request songs list for the mixer. Nah, you should have nah, nah. seen freaking Alex's list. Name it was me. like, Bend It Like Banana Vibes Cartel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, was oh, yeah. I'm, I'm like, just, oh, can I'm I'm trying to get a vibe. I'm on like some R&B vibe. This nigga said yes. yes. been like, but not. I'm like, yo, Alex. When you're coming out your rum pin shop. Yo, that is not the vibe. That's <laughs> intense. That's okay. boss wedding. And, that's like. And that's what I wanted to ask you. What was y'all uh, listening to at y'all parties in DC, DMV oh, area? Well, like, what was that, the vibe? I think like, go if you go. want girls to twerk, you play go-go. Yeah. Oh, oh like, yeah. yeah. Very exactly. specific to the DMV area. And then. You gotta have some rhythm for the twerk. But even like, um. <laughs> Little John and the East Side Boy, like that'll get girls twerking, like Petey Pop. Yeah. Little John, yeah. What? Nah, y'all needed some nah nah nah. <laughs> y'all needed some, <laughs> some flavor. Yo, that that, <laughs> that that was a big <laughs> culture shock. Oh my god. Come but then even, just a different um, type of music? Okay. Different type of music and then just like People, religion, you know, the, people. Oh, really? There's no Dominicans in Maryland? <laughs> Yo, say more, say, I'm sorry. Like, stuck on the Dominicans. Nah, yeah. Because the Dominicans, like, they bring the culture nah, out. Dominicans got to be Dominican. Dominican. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. The nah. fact that she has to ask. He do enough hookah. I'm so. not. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. My hookah intake might say different, but I'm not Dominican. We have a little bit of everything in Maryland. And yeah, I don't definitely. know if I didn't see it. Like, maybe I just wasn't cognitive of it when I was living there. Uh -huh. And I was just in my black-ass bubble. Yeah. But, you know, moving. 
even here, I was like, oh my God. Even okay. down to like my Jamaican and Nigerian, like Meta, Meta told me, oh, that's yeah. some black American shit one time. Yeah. I was so hot. I'm like, what do you mean some black American shit? Oh, I'm not gonna lie. Sure? I feel you. Yeah. What do you mean? So on this podcast, they are of culture, right? They have the ethnicity. They have, so I am not. Do I'm a black Yo, American. That is which the culture. Means, that is the culture. Which means that is the I biggest gotta culture. figure my shit no. out. We have to almost like oh. adapt to our environment, all right? We got to pick up so you're closer i don't even want to say closer to the south you have a southern influence oh. yeah right so you said gucci man yeah. you said jeezy Virginia's those right are there. southern influence people me i'm jadakiss i'm fab and there's nothing wrong like oh, this i mean i'm that too oh see, but we're not but you got the party the, you got the uh, best of both worlds that's not that at the party though at, nah y'all playing jada at the party <laughs> I, I would, he would. if he party. could he would i would this you man would you Jada, play what at the party? Jada Kiss. You about to make me angry. But I want to play Jada Kiss. I need to know. You about to play styles? I want to play styles. Nala. I want to play Lloyd. Nala. I know this man. This, I want to play he Pusha ain't T. Do it. I want to play Pusha T. This, this the man. This, I'm not mad at the Pusha, but this, at the party, I don't I'm know. I'm not playing nah, Pusha. No, you're not. At push. my party, if it was me, push. if I told you, it's not a we thing, it's a me thing. Definitely if I say, yo, Alex, come yeah. to my party, what am I playing? Tab Bunny. Tell Nala. No, I think, no, I think <laughs> bunnies. No, I think he's Kevin right now because <laughs> Savon always emphasizes we have to play music that women want to hear. You so always R&B. say that. that so you would not play like uh, Pusha T, you know? She's right. Got me. You got me. That's always like your point, you know? That is my point. Shout out to the ladies. To your point about like hip hop or in our identity, I was, it's like, I had to realize that hip hop is not black culture. Like mm. we're heavily embedded in black culture, but mm. it's not ours. Even down to the point of like, like really? Rob came over the other, uh, I had said, yo, I love that Mexican OT. Like he's so fire, blah, blah. Yeah. And Rob came over and was like, how you feel about him saying the N word? You know, it's mad controversial. And I'm like the same way I feel about all the Puerto Ricans saying the N-word, mm-hmm. like I had to get used to it. I yeah. can't, there's yeah. nothing I can do. That's how I feel. What, what can I do? <laughs> I'm with, no, I'm in, with in you. In Maryland, I don't hear you. that. But in New York, I hear everybody I'm saying it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, like, but that's like, that's like not good. Like you're, are you in kind of like a place where like, well, I'm not going to, you know, I can't do everything about but it. But I, I think it's a cultural thing. And I think it's also a lived experience thing. So like somebody like a Fat Joe. I'm not gonna look at a fat Joe and be like, yo, you can't say that. Yeah. Like, mm. I grew up, I know what I he's go- been through just by knowing who he is. You know? I'm also not gonna look at nobody and say, you can't say that because if I ain't ready to fight, I ain't gonna say shit. I respect you know what that. I mean? I like, respect- just, okay. What can I That's do? Real. But yeah. there is, you know, there, there's a certain energy where it's like, all right, I know where that comes from, and I know you aren't of that. You didn't earn that. Yeah. And this might be a controversial topic, and that's fine with me. Mm-hmm. Like, I have Puerto Rican friends, Dominican friends, um, you know, just people who aren't black that have said the N word, nigga, yeah. like, yo, yeah. what am I? Like? And you just chill. It, 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 you know, like, it's a cultural like, thing. It's a lived experience <laughs> thing. Like, for, for me, so, at least. No, no, and again, no, no. we're that from is, New York. That is very controversial. We're from New York. Yeah. Like, we're from New York, and right? And when in Rome. That's what my dad, because I used to come home pissed, like, nah, dad, I can't fuck with this. <laughs> There's going like, to be a lot of people who don't like, like what I'm saying. you're in Rome. Remember, yeah. you're in Rome. I'm like, oh, fuck. And then there's some people who would, who would be like, no, Nyla, like, correct them. Like, but I will say this. I will say this. Can I'm going to clean up myself a little bit. That is very controversial. There's not a single white person that I've ever said, you got that pass. I know you. I know they ain't. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I don't give a fuck where you grew up, yeah, how yeah, you yeah. lived, yeah. and and I don't make the rules. But for me personally, right. there's a barometer. Yeah. And like I said, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, there's been some Mexicans. I'm like, yo, I know your lived experience. Yeah. Yeah. I know why you say it. I know the side of the fence that you live on in history. Yeah. So I just, you know, question, I accept it. And I'm cool with that. Yeah. But there's not a single white person where I give you that pass. Yeah, you got a question? Yeah, question for, for you. Me. You ever in, been in a situation where you didn't feel comfortable until you heard, you know, a fellow person of color or have been around the culture say the N word? Say that one more what? time for me. Like, have you ever, have you ever not been comfortable until with a person until you've heard them say it? You mean like say like the N word face to face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you mean like in person? Yeah, yeah in person. Yeah, I, I don't I, think that's. I don't think black people yeah. are looking for other black people to say the N word to comfort. You yeah. could kind of like read. With eye contact, I could tell if you if you're get cool, me. Yeah. And it, you don't even yeah. got to be like a, a black person. I could yeah. just like when I met Regina, I'm like, oh, she's cool. Yeah. We followed each other wow, and we you. became cool. So I don't even think like like that's not. It's not like a term of endearment where I'm like, oh, you're down. No, because like, some people black, just say it just to like be like, oh yeah, look at me, I'm cool. You know? Yeah. yeah. Like there's been times on this podcast where I'll tell a story and I'll refer to Reggie. I'm like, yo, it's my. 
And Bridget looked at her like, yo, bro, <laughs> he didn't even say anything. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> she doesn't. She yeah. doesn't say anything. Gabe never but corrects I, me either. I know she would never <laughs> sit there and be like, all right, let me, you know, let me indulge in that. Yeah, but yeah. she's in the culture. She knows what it is. And that's just how we speak. Like, yeah. that's our vocabulary. And you can also and, notice when it's coming with some disrespect. And again, like, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, like, to answer your question, P, like, I think, yeah. again, th there's a certain, and this is one of the things that black people, we actually get. Yeah. Like, we don't get a lot of things in life. <laughs> Right, <laughs> we get to control <laughs> and decide <laughs> who can say what and yeah. when. Right, like, right. nigga, if your white ass or if you don't look like you should be saying, nigga, I'm gonna tell you. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many niggas you grew up around. Uh -huh. Like, uh -huh. I have that power in that moment where I could decide uh -huh. if I want to snuff you or not, and you just gotta respect it. You get like, yeah. that's just that's one of the fun. things that we do that's actually get to control. Black so. America, we have a very interesting culture, man. It, yes. But we're also a dying breed. Week five of the NFL season is here, and there's no better way to get in on the action than with Underdog Fantasy. Mm. Underdog Fantasy will match your first deposit up to $100. If you click the link in the description and sign up using the code need to know that's free money, and there's nothing we love more free money mm -hmm. you feel what i'm saying we also love underdog fantasy over here because they dish out promos on the regular in the form of their pick em specials all right i love honestly honestly i know i'm super competitive yeah yes y'all know i keep up with sports you know i keep up with these apps we do. i'm here underdog fantasy is where i like to go mm -hmm. when i want to when i'm feeling a little you know dangerous when i feel like yeah. i want to get out of my comfort zone i want to try have, have a little fun you know, i want to have a little bit yeah. of fun yeah. i go to underdog fantasy Same. they've been holding me down it's been a a, a, a delightful a, a very um deluxe i feel like it's a deluxe yeah. experience yeah, it's not just sure. that regular shit y'all be on yeah not it's premium. Real shit to me. it's oh a premium goodness. experience yeah, so again premium. underdog fantasy uh come over here because they dish out promos on the regular in the form of their pick'em specials this week they are asking if justin fields will have higher than one total yards when the bears face the commanders on thursday night mm. if you ask us click higher oh. all right that's just our opinion that's yeah. i'm not game. trying to sway you any way my opinion I'm is you just you just go higher i'm confident all right wow i, I got i got faith in the young that boy. was a gem guys but remember that's underdog fantasy click the link in the description sign up with promo code need to know for a first deposit matchup of up to 100 dollars. that Ooh. sounds great to me well, let's go get that I'm glad you mentioned that. We Do you are. feel any pressure as a millennial in this space, like carrying on the torch? Mm. Let me let me elaborate. As a right? black American? No, just in general. Like, <laughs> She's like to carry my race. <laughs> no, 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 I, I mean, in the media space. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Now that's too much responsibility. You like to save my okay. population? Yeah, I, can't, I can't put all of that on you. Yeah, it's yeah. too many of us. Come on, we got we got to split up the job. <laughs> like, we got to split up the job. <laughs> yeah, we got to split up the job. We can't just put that on knowledge. She's like, I'm saving civilization. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the media space, right? Because I just remember having certain conversations with him. And he just really thought all young niggas was dumb. <laughs> but I don't necessarily blame him because a lot of those people grew up in the era of the time where, you know, hip hop was a little bit more, it was newer, it was fresher. So do you feel like pressure kind of no, having to know certain things or be abreast of certain things? Because after they stopped, cherry, uh, you know, carrying on certain things about from that generation, it's only really up to us, us to keep it going. Yeah. Um, I don't really feel any pressure because I've been, like I said, I've always had hip hop as my culture growing up till I moved here. So I'm pretty well versed in like 80s, 90s, 2000. Right. Like I'm, I've been keeping up. Yeah. So I don't feel any pressure, but I think more than anything, the pressure is just on myself just to continue to, to be good and like, yeah. you know, develop. Cause you know, I'm developing in real time. Like it's crazy that, you know, I'm on like the world's biggest morning show getting 80,000 listens over there, but then my YouTube only gets 50 views. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it, it kind of no, like, it, it keeps you that very, was. very humble yeah. because um, <laughs> it's like, you know, it's just, it's just it's, you, you gotta really yourself. want it. You Nyla. know what I mean? It, that keeps you grounded because you're not just like, oh, I'm on the Rex Club, I'm done. Like you're very yeah, you're like, I'm Nyla, up. I'm still working on my personal brand. Yeah. Like I'm still putting myself out there. And it was very important for me, you know, like what Gabe did with On The Radar was very inspiring because yes. I was bumping into a lot of, you know, politics dealing with the companies that I've been dealing with where, mm -hmm. you know, they own my content or they're not paying me or I can't get the space or they're not putting out my content even though I gave them exclusive interviews. I had one Aww. artist come and announce his project, the name, the date, everything. Mm -hmm. 
it didn't come out until after, after the project yeah. dropped. Yeah, and I know exactly how that feels. It's so yeah. frustrating. So anyway, nonetheless, uh, you know what? That's when I was like, well, damn, I, I, I have to do it. I literally jumped out the window, mm. bought a podcast space, mm. Um, Big it. Oh, shit. Big mm. knowledge. No, 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 no. Period. I did not have the money. Like, my parents was like, are you kidding me? You can barely afford it. I'm like, I don't care. I'm, I'm chasing it. my dreams, mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, you gotta, you have to continue to apply pressure. Yeah, so for yeah. me, it was That's like, real. by any means necessary, I'm gonna figure it out. Whether yep. I got a DJ every gig in the, mm-hmm. in the city or whatever the case may be, I was just willing to do it. Yep. And, um... Yeah, so I would say it's no pressure. To me, the pressure is just on myself and with like my personal mm-hmm. goals. Facts. Yeah, to be the best self you can be. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's Honestly, cool. that's one of the reasons why I'm such a big fan of you because there's not a lot of people that I can look to that has a shared experience in this space. Mm-hmm. So I look at you, I look at Edin, I look at um, Taylor. Y'all are the three that come to mind to me where it's like, all right, y'all are building your own thing, but y'all are a, a part of something so big that sometimes you get overshadowed and you have doubt so when you said that situation where it's like all right i'm on the breakfast club and it has millions of views right and i'm comfortable in that but then when i'm trying to do my own thing i'm like wait this shit is not adding up it's not translating it's not (laughs) like what is wrong with me so there's been a uh yo thank god that you came on this podcast because like we're speaking in a similar that's why i've been wanting to come on here because i'm like yo i I've never had another black American on the show. Oh, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Nah, in my head, I never did that. Yo, we just we had, just had two Tuesday. Yo, in my head. <laughs> and Ish. I, and yo, Ellie Wilson. In my head. Yeah. This, this Elliot, is the first Elliot black Elliot American. Yeah. You get I don't know Juwan, but he sound black American. <laughs> he said that was the first <laughs> nah, other fellow black American on the show. I'm dead ass. In my head, I'm dead ass. Jesus. So, when I hear Nyla say certain things, right, that's one of the few things. But also... There's a recurring theme on this podcast. Yeah. I'm very intense, right? As you can see. I'm very, I'm <laughs> intense and passionate. Yeah. I'm very intense. That's why we work. I'm well, very passionate. Well, he's a Leo Rising song, you know. Right? No. Uh, he is. He it's is. a lot going on in it's here. I know. <laughs> it, is, I know. it works. We I make know. it work. It does. Okay. But one of, the, one of the things about myself like that that works with me and Alex, right? Yeah. I'm very intense. I'm very passionate. <laughs> He and I, we we we've clashed heads in the past. We don't often clash heads. Yeah. We really not don't. Not so much anymore. We we yeah. we don't. But the times that we have, it's only because a lack of understanding in our genuine nature. Yeah. yeah. My so nature is that. intensity, yeah. and a, a part of my intensity in this space in particular is because of that same thing that you experience, which is I was working with Joe Budden, biggest podcast, one of the biggest podcasts in music, right? I'm looking at the numbers. I'm help building it. I'm a part of the storylines. People know me from there. And then I come yeah. over here and I do my thing. And it's like, wait, the <laughs> fuck? I ain't even got like <laughs> fuck a 10%. Like, I ain't even got a 2%. Like, what the fuck is going it was on? fucking with my, it fucks with my yeah. head sometimes. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's hard for me to sleep at night knowing that so many people have access to me or they know me from this, but it's just not translating for whatever reason. So I commend you for like saying that out loud oh, because yeah. I think a lot of my misunderstandings, and not with Alex, because I think Alex yeah. and, and Reggie, they understand me at this point. Yeah. But even in my personal life with my friends or relationships, they don't get why I don't sleep at night because it's like <laughs> I know what's possible. Like when you see Charlemagne Yo. and when you see Envy, you like, Yo, these niggas is doing. Can I give you a little <laughs> bit of credit though? Because in every group and every you know endeavor, we need somebody like this. Yeah. Because okay, me, I'm a that. very like trust the process, the universe aligns type of girl, yeah. and he's very like, no, Regina, I'm yeah, up yeah. at two a.m. You know, <laughs> queuing up videos yeah. and yeah. But I will say That's just good. to like slip yeah. this in there, no pause. Like she, your personal brand is like really strong though like you do have your own individual like not Simone like you have like a personal brand so thank you you're like doing it for yeah, sure I'm, I think I'm probably more like you with trust the process <laughs> where like mm-hmm. like I, I'm like you where I'm like ah oh, I see it <laughs> I see it yeah. but I, I'm happy like like you said um, how happy you are about your 5,000 for sure that's me like I'm happy yeah. every time I get a new subscriber like oh shit, shit. I got a <laughs> subscriber like, they follow for her YouTube okay subscribe yes please <laughs> I, like every time um, I get a subscriber or just like all, all the little things count so it's cool to like build your fan base in real time mm-hmm. and like I'm at peace with that and yeah. like I wasn't a part of the breakfast club since the beginning you know mm-hmm. I wasn't around with Angie doing x y and z since the beginning so I don't feel entitled to like anything they got going on but it does it like seeing it lets me know that it's possible so mm-hmm. that's why yeah. I keep doing it yeah. you know? and you're so that close that's to a good it point. yeah I think I think what, like my style of that is studying studying gives me a lot of peace 
Mm. Because if I can understand the game, then I, I won't make myself upset. Mm. Right? So then I can know how to grow and pivot from this and that. So like she just said, like, oh, yeah. I see it's been done. So I'm like right. really watching yeah. closely. Exactly. But that made me think, like, okay, so what you just said about like, oh, I wasn't there since the beginning and I'm, you know, new on the show. Have you like had to deal with any sort of like intense backlash in any way because you're very likable so have you had any of those growing pains like people are being like oh there's this new girl and have you received any hate comments or criticisms or no ha has it been smooth not publicly oh maybe okay. like internal within like a company like i've had oh really? i've had people try to set me up all the time what? wow all well, like, the time. What? like i um, mean not specifically but like just maneuvering things on the back end in a bad way or uh, i've had like mentors funny. encourage me to like have sex with guys on the job and then try to like what oh and, yo, and i did, like, not, I did oh, not know damn. you were gonna say that that's my that's damn. what that tweet was really about when wow. i was tweeting that i uh -huh. was talking about like different people who have tried to take advantage manipulate yeah yeah, yeah. and like people will always pretend like they're trying to help you yeah i've had somebody do that i mean i didn't fall for it but i've watched yeah, somebody yeah. else Wow. Fall for it, and then she literally went and told everybody, like you know, she's doing da da da, da oh, to the point where it makes it wow. awkward, and then she don't want to work there no more. Or even mm -hmm. like um, when I got hired as a DJ, all the men were pissed. Like all, there was probably like three who weren't hating on me, mm -hmm. like who actually was like, "Yo, congratulations!" Yeah, like yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. if you need any tips, let me know. Yeah. If you want X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z. But besides that, like other people were coming up to me, like they are talking bad about you in the group chat. Like every time, it was what always the hell? like. Where does that come from? Because you like <clears throat> you remind me of Reggie in a way. Because on this podcast, we have a thing, right? If you go in our Instagram comments, there is one percent negative comments about Reggie. <laughs> like one percent, right? Yeah, like, That's yeah. probably what, what's your percentage? Mm -hmm. Point two. You don't, you don't he don't read comments. Point two. <laughs> Alex is on bottom. I don't read comments. He Alex might be like a read point comments. Five. But Savon, remember how he stay, stays up at night? He said he yeah. stays up at night reading comments. Read you comments. have to stop reading the comments. I, I, yeah. Yo, now, tell you gotta stop I, reading I, the comments. I do. Tell him. But <laughs> I'll read all of them until I see a bad one, then I stop reading. Uh, I don't want to read no more. You don't want to ruin your mood. I think that's healthy, right? Yeah. But that one that I did read will fuck me up. I'll be like, ah. But yeah, maybe yeah, I gotta do this differently. Yeah, like, but it's like no. Like, are I'm, you on Reddit? I try not to be. Don't be. <laughs> See, I, she I, I get it. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, again, yeah. I told you I'm a junkie for this space. So <laughs> my favorite podcast is the Brilliant Idiots podcast. Okay, like, that Reddit thread is going crazy. crazy. I, that is that's that's my leisure. That's my my. I don't even want to say it's a vice. Like that's just where I like to go. That's what you yeah. swap with two K. Yeah, <laughs> I swapped out two K for <laughs> Brilliant Idiots. Right here, it honestly is interchangeable depending on the week. You could do it at the same time. Actually, I have. But <laughs> Brilliant Idiots for me, like, that's my go to podcast when I'm just out of work, when I'm not doing anything. I listen to it. Cool. So that's why I, I, I got introduced to you. But for you, like, how do you deal with, like Reggie said, the comments, you know, some of the feedback, some of the backlash? Because that's intense you what you any. just said. Like, because you don't warrant it. Yeah. Like, she doesn't warrant it. Like, I might and I accept it. You, you, you two don't. I mean, as far as like internet, the only thing that people usually say online is just like, oh my God, you could tell that she likes this guy or they uh, definitely gonna go fuck after this. Like, I get oh, that brother. all the time. But I feel like that's easy to deal with because it's like, <laughs> it's, it's so stupid. Yeah. It's so <laughs> stupid. Like, yeah. Why but, do they get so horny on your comments? Yeah, no, I'm with like, a woman, you're always fuck? gonna get that type of shit. They're probably like, gonna say yeah. that about me talking to y'all. Like, you could tell she was looking at Alex, or yeah, tell she was like and say, yeah, Mine, it's gonna be like, Yo, bro, I'm just yeah. enjoying the conversation. Not. This is my job, <laughs> <laughs> but I better not. But I don't really take comments personally unless it's like coming from somebody like that I personally know. So if it's not oh, like shit. my mom, dad, oh my brother, yeah. Charlamagne, my best the ones friend, that matter. if they say something like you shouldn't have did that, it'll fuck me up. Yeah. But if it's somebody oh, online, oh. I don't really care. Yeah, I yeah. said, I, I think I told that to you one time, right? You like, did. only really you take did. critiques you from did. the people that love and know you. Facts. Because they're mm -hmm. going to come from a place of actually wanting to critique you yeah. educationally. And right? wanting to see yeah. the best for you. And wanting to see the best for you, exactly. Yeah. People online don't know you, yeah. don't know where you're coming from, and they're just speaking from a place of where they think they're yeah. speaking from. Especially yeah. with Savon, because, like, <laughs> Savon and Alex, like, the people that know them and that are in our comments are people that are like, of that like Joe world, so then mm. they're coming from that space. So mm. I'm just like, don't listen to them. They don't know you like that. Simon. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna it's ask hard. you, like working so closely with Charlemagne's and the DJ Envy. DJ Envy, he's had a year. 
He's had a year. <laughs> he's had a, <laughs> he's, had a really, he's had a really <laughs> tough year. Yeah. But working with people like that, who's always in the public spotlight, like what have you taken away from them when it comes to like dealing with feedback, dealing with haters, dealing with rumors, or just people in general who say things about you that don't really apply? I think she, I think she handles it a little better. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> well, I don't, I, I don't got the spotlight that yeah. they have. Yeah. But, um, but I'm sure you still learn things from them. Like yeah. working so closely with people that are great. You pick things up. I think I have to say my real boot camp came with working with Angie Martinez and I just watching how she maneuvers, especially like as a woman, because it's different than how a man can maneuver, yeah. you know, and then there's just a different way that you have to demand respect in a room, especially in the music industry, yeah. especially being. And she is respected. You know right? what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. like. She's a Capricorn. You and she's that? a Capricorn. Yeah. That's why when you hey, say hey, Capricorn, I'm like, I understand. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> the intense to like win and you go. get it done. Yes. Yeah. There's actually so many Capricorns in that building. Yeah. He's a Capricorn, first choice of Capricorn, Stop, DJ he's Will, this Self. Right now. Oh, thank you. Like, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we have a lot of Caps. So Damn. I'm very familiar with Capricorns. We work pretty well together. Yeah. Just not me as a personal assistant, you know. I got <laughs> yeah, because she, but, I was going to ask you, because she, yeah, she got yeah, fired from being the yeah. assistant. Them Capricorns what are happened, Nyla? You're such a hard worker. What, what yeah, could possibly happen? I'm a hard worker, but I'm a creative. So it's like, mm, you can't ask yeah. me to book things and remember five steps ahead. That shit is going to fall flat to the ground. But ask me how to pipe your shit up, I'll tell you the right thing yeah. um, you know what i mean because that's like <laughs> assistant shit assistant like yeah. remembering like the schedule and stuff like that calendars just, calls yeah. rescheduling family shit like nah, i, I you're don't have to you're more on on screen talent don't worry yeah yeah or even even if i'm not on screen i can even be behind the scenes like there's a lot of projects that i want to do for other people that yeah. i haven't pitched yet because i don't have the time but like i just like creating period so mm -hmm. having to use my left side of the brain is like mm -hmm. a drag i hate responding to emails like Same. hey yeah, pc I talk you. i hate that shit unless, Thank unless God it, we it's got to do with money yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was sexing her way thank god we touched thumbs almost fell over I, <laughs> I tell you <laughs> but um handling the pressure yeah i i learned from angie and really That's it's just up. to mind your business we honestly Ooh, mind your business. Is that not bar. why every time we wow. talk about the goals and all that? I always say I love Angie's like you know career because she's not known for the mess messy. and she always kept yeah. it classy. But she yeah. always like had her own flavor to it. Like she was in music videos, making yep. she was yeah. looking hot. Like you know, mm -hmm. so she did it her own way. But why I always say I love her career is because of that. Like she just minds her business, mm -hmm. does her job really well. Mm -hmm. She's not screaming in interviews, and she's she, genuinely like. A, just a really good person. Like yeah. she's not. Yeah. She's not trying to make you feel silly, look silly. Yes. She keeps it a buck with you. That's why people trust her. Yeah. yeah. But she's not gonna go on a platform and like Bash. air you out or anything like that. Yeah, and she's that's just, why she she her career. She's known for like having these great conversations, and that's how you do it. Like that's how you're supposed to move. I, yeah. I think people don't realize that Angie, Angie Martinez actually asks a lot of spicy questions. People don't realize it though. I think tough. It's, Tough. I don't want to say spicy. spicy. Okay, I tough. Think, we can I think use spicy tough. is like yeah. love okay. and hip hop. We can use tough. Yeah, not salacious. Yeah, yeah, she not doesn't do salacious. Not salacious, about, like, not authentic, but authentic and tough. Yeah, okay. and, See, and, I, and I feel like people People feel, don't appreciate it don't. because it, it's not done the style, distastefully. The style. Exactly. People want you to show your ass. Like They want to be like, why da 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 And it's like, yo, Thank somebody you. told me, um, oh, God. I don't even, I'm not going to say his name, but somebody okay, was you like, yo, you would never just tell somebody you don't like the record the way Charlemagne just shits on the record. And <laughs> first of all, I hate constantly being compared to Charlemagne. I get it. But yeah, like I our mean. styles are completely different. Even I mean, that like, like, this is why I like you. Complex say, <laughs> I know you can relate to that. Complex was like Charlemagne's protege. I get it. Oh. I get it. But nigga, like Angie brought me into the game. My oh. style is much similar to, okay. to Angie's. But, but you, you would agree that on camera, he's embraced you as... You know his, oh, your knees, his knees. Absolutely, God, that's yeah. like right, right. my guy. Like if I have two OGs. I call Angie mother and <laughs> Charlemagne's unk. Uh, but they're yeah. like, if I had to say, like I, I moved out here by myself, whatever. Been here ten years. They became like my mom and dad, my industry mom and dad. Right. Yeah, because so you came like, here alone. Yeah, that's yeah. such a beautiful. That's yeah, that's like a flex, mentor. You like, know what I'm saying? Like but the, let me the, not the, say the mentorship. I can call and be like, hey, like I'm hungry. It's not like that. You know what I mean? Like they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't they talk to them little, all the time. It's still space. like a level mentor of respect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, it's still yeah, like, yeah. hey, queen. I just want to know. You know what I mean? It's like that. But um, where was I going with this? 
I have no idea. Uh, I don't know. Your, your but mentors? I, I think I think that says a lot about you. Like I always say, so with this run of all the people that acknowledge us, like shout out to Charlemagne. He yeah. uh, gave us a really, really dope shout Absolutely. out on Brilliant Idiots. No, he's really a fan of you guys. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe up. it. That's crazy. All no, you know what's funny? Us. This is what actually happened. <laughs> I was like, or I had hit you on like a Monday or a Sunday. Yeah. And then the next day he's like, you know this need to know podcast. I really like them. They're really interesting. They got good chemistry, and yeah. I'm like, oh wow, yeah. I actually just tried to get on their show, but you know they're they're mad Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> they, they're like a week later, Elliot's on. I'm like, I'm yeah, never I'm getting on the show. <laughs> God damn it! See, like, it's like things like that, yeah. like little tiny stories like that Love is me. like I'm just like I believe in God because he. Right. That's how he's like having yeah. fun with us. He's like, yeah. look, I'm gonna do this. Right. I'm gonna have Nyla ask, but then yeah. give the Charlemagne shout. Yo, out. it was weird, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's alignment. Yeah, yeah. but I'll say that means the world to people like us. Yeah, because it's easy to already be a establishing this space and act like you don't see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? So for mm -hmm. him to do that, I like the fact that there are still people in this space that are still doing it, right? Charlamagne yeah. cares. Like if it's one thing about him, he he really, really cares and he really puts his money where his mouth is. So mm -hmm. I have to say like, like Angie taught me how to move, mm -hmm. but Charlamagne really put me in position to win. Gotcha. So Ooh, I'm like forever beautiful. indebted to, to those two. And I would also say like with Charlamagne, like, we he's really I mean I call him my uncle but he's like a brother like yeah, I could go to his yeah. crib I can go vinyl shopping find oh, some wow. cool vinyls and then go to his house and we'll play them like we really just be be chilling me him That's kids fire. the wife like it's it's, it's really a vibe <laughs> you're so. really family I knew it was family when you yeah. was cussing him out <laughs> yeah. when you could give somebody a good cuss that means y'all really cool because that means the love is there that's what me and Savon used to do yes. so, yeah <laughs> nah, we, should, we still might do it <laughs> <laughs> once in a while we might trade shot but <laughs> family for sure I, I, I for do sure. want to like again, uh, just you know, just sticking on the the point with the Charlemagne and the Angie Martinez. The first thing I want to yeah. say is shout out to you and shout out to us too. I want to like give us a salute for mm. keeping the legends alive. For sure, like there's Hell so yeah. many people in the new media space who don't acknowledge the the Angie Martinez's, the big boys, the sways, like. I don't understand how they don't get brought up in these conversations more mm -hmm. often because without them, it wouldn't really be a us. space like this, like uh, like legit. Absolutely. So I do want to salute you for that, um, but also like shifting gears a little bit towards Charlemagne. So for me, just a personal anecdote when it comes to Charlemagne. In 2013, 2014, around that time, I had just graduated college in 2012, right? I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do in my life. I thought I wanted to be a teacher. I thought I wanted to be an actor. My grades was fucking poor. I was worried about women. And <laughs> really? I was like, I thought you were studious. My at least. GPA no. was, uh, <laughs> was a w negative <laughs> two. I was fucked up in the game. Shout out to you, Pierre. Fuck out of here. <laughs> but so I didn't know what I wanted to do. So my grandmother, I was living with my grandmother at the time, and she gave me an ultimatum. She said, "You're either gonna pay rent, which is eight hundred dollars a month. Now, in two thousand and twenty, mm. in, in two thousand and twelve. Eight hundred a month. That's a lot of fucking. That's a lot. That's oh, a lot. I didn't have that back then. Mine's just six hundred. So eight hundred. That's, that's, that's a lot. So yeah. she gave me the ultimatum. Like, yo, you either got to pay rent or you go to college and you find a career. I was like, fam, I'm not paying my grandmother eight hundred. Like, I don't know what you thought this was, Ma. You're never getting eight hundred dollars out of it. So <laughs> I elected his granny no dollars. Yo, nah. Why you give his granny no yeah, dollars? Petty. She's gonna go learn how a trade. Oh my god! Oh, I'm gonna start uh, like fucking doing this, like that. bro. That was my thought process. Like, I love my grandmother Yo. to death, like my heart. Just but when you, no get when you said eight hundred, I'm like, bro, you better learn how to fix a tire. Yo. Like, oh go god. to the shop. You gotta fix. But anyway, grandma, I'm so sorry. I told I understand why the numbers in the comment section <laughs> sway your way. Because <laughs> that was wild. Yes. <laughs> he be having he like the hot the way, But that's yeah. my, it's I the love way he speaks. That's my heart. That was wild. And she yeah. loves me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She gave me he the ultimate. Just like Granny learn how to. Oh my God. <laughs> the tire, though. Crazy, you I don't said. even call her Granny. <laughs> but it was $800 or find oh. a career path, right? I, I wasn't giving her the 800 so I had to find a career path. I, I went on his website. Long story short, there was a, um, like a call to action for real life scenarios of people who were dealing with uh, situations that broke the guy code, mm. right? So I'm like, all right, cool. I got my niggas, all my guys. We've been doing this shit for a long time, running the streets, cool. So I had a friend <laughs> yeah. who whenever we would hang out, it was three of us. If one of them was the odd man out, he would do embarrassing things. So this one particular friend at that time, he would just fart. So we would be like, it would be me and the guys, and there would be some women around, right? And since he was the odd man out, and he wanted to go home, 
he would just blow ass. <laughs> He's just fine. And I'm like, Scared bro, what is you doing? Like, I got some action. My other boy got some action. <laughs> You're supposed to just take one for the team and be okay with that. But instead, right. he kept farting. So I submitted this scenario to MTV Aww. and the folks over at MTV2, they picked it up and they're like, yo, we want you on our show, mm -hmm. Guy Court. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So I'm like, I bet. Cool. Fuck it. Like, it. this shows my grandmother that I'm actually pursuing my career. <laughs> and this is what you showed your grandmother. Yeah, yeah, my nah, friend's part, yeah. mom. I got to go talk about my friend's part. You feel me? Like, okay. And then you got to call it work. Yeah, this work. <laughs> so it gave work. me, like, it bought me some yeah. time in life. Okay. Because I'm like, wait, I'm on MTV too. Like, this Donnell okay, Rollins. Okay, that is pretty cool. Donnell Rollins was, yeah. like, the main person, the host yeah. of that show. So I'm like, yeah. I bet I got it. So I get there. Um, I was there all day. I got there maybe 12... A 12 p.m. and it ended around 8 p.m. I was the last case on the show, mm -hmm. right? So I got to see all the talent from Guy Code. Um, if anybody doesn't know, go look up Guy Code. It's a really, really fantastic show. Oh yeah, but I missed those days. But they took the, the cast from Guy Code and translated it to Guy Court. Yeah. And then, long story short, you had to be represented by one of the cast members from Guy Code. Yeah. So I'm watching all of the tam talent: uh, Damian Lemon, uh, Andrew Schultz, Donnell Rollins, Charlemagne, all of these people, right? Um, and then my case comes up with my, oh, my farting God. friend <laughs> and we're the last case and I don't know who I'm going to get assigned to. I'm like, I don't know. Just put me on TV, mom. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? I don't want to pay you $800. <laughs> and so I get there. They dress me up. Cool. Do my makeup. First time I ever had makeup done. I mm -hmm. felt I felt really good. Okay, my period. Makeup. Yeah. I was like, yo, yeah, I felt really yes. good. If like, men just embrace a little more, you know, just a little bro, concealer. Bro, my face is beat. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> like, I felt really good. Beat be for the gods. Uh, I get there and Charlemagne <laughs> is my lawyer for this mm -hmm. segment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? And I just remember being in awe of his professionalism, how quick he was as far as thinking. Yeah. And there was no script. There was a few cues and they said, action. And he turned on. Mm -hmm. And that moment changed my life. Legit. I knew in that moment, mm -hmm. I wanted to do something. In, like I was, eh, I was on the yeah. fence about it before that. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, being on guy court, uh, working closely with Charlemagne, and to him, he probably didn't think it was close. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm like, wait, this is something I can do. I can be me, make a living, mm -hmm. make an impact, yeah. and still have fun with this shit. Yeah. So to see you and have, you know, just that connection with a Angie Martinez, who's been doing this shit literally before I was probably born. Like I was born in '94. She was interviewing fucking Tupac. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. to have that type of connection <laughs> relationship, and then also have somebody like a Charlemagne. That's why I started the top of this podcast, letting you know, like, yo, I'm really a fan of you because I know what it takes for you to even get here. And you didn't grow up in New York City. Yeah, That's we big. get clowned a lot because yeah. we're from Long Island. Alex and I, we're from Long Island. Where Reggie, she's again? from Jersey. They won't say to my face. Though. We're on the outskirts, <laughs> and when I say we, I mean. <laughs> Yo, you, <laughs> you don't gotta kill nah, yeah. no, Don't make me run off the list of Long Island legends. <laughs> Listen, nobody, do nobody's that. trying he to hear about that. He does that every time. <laughs> keep going. Nobody's trying I'm to hear nothing you. about Long Island. Howard Stern? I know. I know. Oh, I didn't know how it turns from Jerry Long Island. Seinfeld? Yes. Oh, we shit. got some legends. Long Island I'm trying to be... tell you now. That's why I be going so hard by Long Island. I be trying to play it. I respect it. Long Island shouldn't be in New York. I respect it. Yo, where the fuck is you from? Niggas from out but no. The, the the folks, the people from the <laughs> outskirts, right? The Maryland's, the Staten Islands, Long Islands, mm -hmm. the Yonkers, upstate, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, like we don't have that same uh, um, respect. We don't. And so to see where you are today, like yeah. I got to commend, I got to salute that. Thank yeah. you. I really love that story. I love how like being in that proximity inspired you because mm. he, he really does turn it on. Like yeah. that's talent. He, he turns it on, but also he is a real life troll. Yeah. Like <laughs> he'll, he'll be off and still be trolling. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think, um, I think that's a really dope story. <laughs> I, that, that felt good to hear. I don't sure. know why, but it did. <laughs> That's what's up. Thank Last you. time I, I ran into you, you was at the Rock the Bells Fest. Oh, yeah. yeah you came to my Aww. side. You came to my work event. And I was so surprised to see you because I was like, wait, what happened? Like, you know, the acts are a little bit older. Yeah. But I should have known that you enjoy music. Hello. Yeah. What? <laughs> okay, let's saw, let's talk about it. Yeah. I saw MC Light backstage and she had on the Tiana Taylor Jordan. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, she's so hip and fly. Like, yeah. I don't ever fan out about like current <laughs> artists. Like, mm. 
you know. Yeah, because it's like even though we're like huge fans of them, like for example, like the, my favorite two people in the world right now are Coco Jones and Victoria Monet. Love, but like even if I them. meet them, I'm not gonna be like ah like starstruck. Like I'll be like I'll try to like you know talk we're peers. to them. Yes, like yeah. so. But I understand like you saying like oh I don't fan out, but. When we see these legends, I fan the fuck out. Do you, okay. Yo, I've yo, seen yo, Ice Cube. Yo. I was like, oh yeah. shit, I've seen Ice Cube so I'm many times. I'm cold. Like, yeah. You hear that say more? <laughs> okay, because okay, yeah. they be debating about that. Okay, let's let 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 debate. I'm, I'm, let you go. I'm a millennial that enjoys music from that era. Mm-hmm. My you, good, my good brother over here went viral a couple weeks ago. I did. Man. Because it was killing me. <laughs> because my good brother was trying to tell me that. Don't nobody want to hear shit from the, the Sugar Hill gang. Would you like to redo or it or no? Boogie, Boogie Down Productions with KRS One. Oh my God. But he, he, he was no. it. So what I'm saying is. Yeah, what are you saying? You have a very extensive palette. I <laughs> Jesus shocked. I don't know if I deal with people who are as sophisticated, complex, and nuanced as yourself. No, no, no. Fuck all the words. He's pulling the words. He's pulling the words. He's pulling the words. Listen, the word when, I, bit, when I get bit. in a vehicle and it's date night and I'm trying to, you know, impress a woman, I'm not going to turn on a hip, a hop, a hip to the hip to the hip to the hip to the I don't, don't do all that. So they was coming for me because I'm like, yo, people aren't listening to that. They're not. <laughs> That's not, actually Cap, though. There's actually an article that, that came out them. that said gonna lo- that okay. out of um, all the radio stations in New York City, WBLS is number one because our, really? because our age group is more into listening it. to 90s R&B and mm. rap. Wow. Tell Yo, him. Alex was say, so buddy? right. Like, he was like, Savon, I hear you. Like, I hear, like, some people might not be listening to Rappers of Life. But, but, but Alex was like, wait. It's such a drag, though. Like, why are you going to all the So, Alex's point was like, no, I work in a radio station, Savon. Yes. People call in to listen to this shit. That's what they were, like, going back and forth about. Well, and she just said the, yeah, she just said the same thing. R-H. But I'm talking about the baddies. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, they be baddies, bro. I'll be hearing their voice on the phone. I'm talking about I don't even know where he's going with the baddies, but when he says baddies, it's giving me dumb and ditzy, and it's giving me like. But sometimes they be the baddest ones, and I don't want to hear a hip, a hop. She just telling you that they do, nigga. They're they're the bitches that want to be programmed. That's what we were talking about earlier. Those the baddies. So so I got. So if you want to play hip hop the hippie, they might like hip hop the hippie. I'm trying to tell you. You know what I mean? You can put them on. I'm trying to tell you. And honestly, I think it's really impressive. Like I had a guy one time. It was like this song reminded me of you, and it was a basic ass R and B record. It was like uh, "Can't You See" by Total. N- not when I say basic, like not like the records. Just not like great. a very but common, common record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you give me like a sleeper, like oh, oh I, I, I know, know exactly. No, I know exactly what you're saying because like, well, not recently, but a few years ago, when I'll be like talking to guys, they'll be like. I have this like you know sex playlist or whatever, and if they put like Pony by like Pony, yeah, like, oh, hell off. Like, like if they give you like those typical Damn. songs, we're like okay. But Bro, if you give you. me some like, Damn, I gotta <laughs> read my Bro, like, like, some, like, Pony, like yeah, don't, don't wait. Like, hold up, give me some like, like, really Smino or like some shit. I'll be like wow, put me on, yes. Put me but on. I told you I'm not a music head, <laughs> so the women I deal like, with they're probably not music heads. But I get what you're saying. You convinced me. It took him. <laughs> that was bad. That was that a was, terrible yo, take. That was, <laughs> that was bad. I feel like Clean the debate up, is officially over. Yeah, yeah, that was rough. Wow, <laughs> she really just packed it up. Yeah, that's but, crazy. But you don't even gotta go all the way to. But my thing is, that's his default. That's his only default. Because nobody wants to Because he know niggas is still listening to Bobby. Remember, he said "Eye of the Tiger." Bro, what? That's not hip hop. That's what. No, that's, that's what, what he said. That's what he said. Oh, I didn't no. Say it was oh, really not a music I didn't person. say it was yes, You're really yes, not a music yo, no, person. If you said no, I have the tiger. Said, I had a tiger. Yo, you're embarrassing me in front bumping. of like friends. <laughs> Which, by bro. the way, I don't mind I the tiger because I like, like nah, electric it. feel. Yeah, I like yeah, records yeah. outside of hip hop as well. But I think he was saying that people remember that more. Like bump no. that more today <laughs> rather than like the old school hip hop records. For me, for me. I don't want to talk to non-music niggas about music. No offense. Yeah. It's been a great combo, but I can't do this. Y'all are representing me horrible. I love it. I love it. Guys, for the people not here, we have, you know, people supporting us in the room, and he's just like this. I ain't gonna front out. You might have to, um, you might have to pass the orcs. <laughs> okay, you see what you're doing? Honestly, that's why I focus you. Because when you pass the orcs, yeah. I'll be listening. Like, yeah. all right, this is what I need to know. Okay. Like, legit. And speaking of pass the orcs, I got to commend you again. Because I really got to salute how you took a segment that was on the Breakfast Club. Up until recently, I think you're doing live live past the aux events, right? Oh yeah, yeah. like wasn't last Friday. That's fire. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. What was the what was the thinking in the going into that? Were you have you always had that thought? I've been trying to do an event for like 
for a while. Right. I've been really trying to do it. Because that's important to like see the people in person. Or show up for you. Yeah. 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 Even like during, even when I was Angie's assistant, I would be like, hey, send me music and I would just give feedback. Like I was just always into that. Yeah. And um, yeah, so with Pass the Ox Live, I wanted to turn it into a live event just to curate and like bring people out. The same way I'm like putting Charlemagne and Envy on, I want to put on like the other people in the industry mm-hmm. to these artists. So, right. An emerging artist. Emerging artists. And even like the yeah. the really, really dope part for me is the open mic part. Like I love, you know, having a Friday and a childish major, even though they're a little more established, but like the gems that I've been finding through the submissions, um, people from like South Carolina, Texas, yeah. Maryland, Ooh. like that. This is really the beginning of their story. Like yeah. you finding them like that. Yeah. And, then, and, and it, it's putting them in rooms with people who are a little more ahead and allowing them to network. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So Ooh. maybe they like I'm saying like, hey, y'all should get on a record together. Y'all got I'm just Ooh, okay. Over here, like, okay. I'm just ample, you know, just trying to connect people. That that's all it's really about. Yeah. I just my overall goal in general, at least with Past the Ox, is just like putting people on the good music, but then also like creating an environment for music lovers to just Vibe. We got to go to the next one, guys. We have to. We're going to take a group to. field trip. Yes. Yes. October 20th. Oh, okay. Ooh, it's R&B okay. night. Oh, oh see, that's my oh, it's R&B night. Shit. I don't really like music, but I like R&B. Yes. Yes. But I like it. Y'all check. We're not going to let you win. We're not going to let you win. He's finally outnumbered here. <laughs> I, I love this. I love yes. this. Okay. <laughs> Dang, I might have to have y'all do something. I would like, no, I would like, 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 I don't know what that, what does that mean? I don't know, I gotta figure out what it looks like, but yeah, yeah, we'll be, you know, like the little MC, like, hey guys, welcome to, oh, is that your job? That's her job, though. I will serve water. (laughs) No, (laughs) just to be there. I will be a bottle girl (laughs) if you you need me to. Jacuri Bowl? I'll bring out the ice. I'm gonna grab me one of the two. I'm gonna figure it out, but Because you know it's R&B now, you need wine and cheese. That would be really cool. You don't need, like, that's, it's not like a judge thing, right? They're just... They're just performing. They're just performing. Yeah, but there's no like winners. You guys are also <laughs> people that they should be tapped in with too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why okay. I feel like I gotta figure out what that looks like. But you guys should definitely see. That's fine. Just let us know. Okay. Group just field let trip. us know. Um, so we do have this segment on the podcast where we oh, accept yeah. voicemails. So I do want to get to that. But before we get to that, yeah. um, I just want to talk about your experience on the Brilliant Idiots podcast. Uh, again, I told you I'm a major fan of that space. Mm-hmm. Andrew Schultz. I, I think he would also be self-proclaimed not a music person. For right? sure. Based on what I've heard. <laughs> Absolutely. You said Taylor Swift was said, about Beyonce. Like, I was yeah, like, yeah. bro. So, Completely you know, biased. what's your experience like working over there on the Brilliant Idiots? I'm sure it's a little bit different from the Breakfast Club and even Rotation. Uh, what's that like? Yeah, Brilliant Idiots. I got to say, because Brilliant Idiots is like barbershop talk, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So for me, yeah. I was like in college, one of my ex was like a really big Brilliant Idiots fan. He would always be like, yo, you need to listen to these guys. They're crazy. They're so funny, blah, blah. And I'm like, nah, no thank you, whatever. That was not <laughs> no <laughs> thank you. Know, like I heard a little bit and it was so... Oh, he hates that podcast I'm, now. I'm also not <laughs> like... Oh, um, oh, he, has, he hates that podcast. <laughs> Look at you now. now. She was like, this is why I like you. They lost a listener because of you. How do you feel about that? What God is so great. Yeah. Look at the... Look at the right. type of things God wow. does. Like, I, okay, all right. Nonetheless, I'm gonna leave it alone. Don't get me in trouble. But, okay, um, okay, okay, okay. He or where am I going with this? So I, I really wasn't familiar with familiar with how big their fan base really was. was. Mm-hmm. But even down to this is probably the first year where people were recognizing me from other things. But this can't be the first year. I feel I like prob- your face is, has always been for like the past out there. six years. People been like, "Yo, you're Nyla from Brilliant Idiots," and I'm like, oh. "Damn, am I Nyla from Brilliant? Yeah, I am. Oh. I've been on Brilliant Idiots probably like five times. Yeah. So the fact that people be like, you're Nyla from Brilliant Idiots kind of blows my mind. But what I will say I like about Brilliant Idiots is that um, it definitely feels like iron sharpens iron Mm. because they have taught me how to be really, really witty and on my feet. Yeah. Uh, Like, I wasn't... Yeah, that's that how was I not feel. my strong suit. That's how I feel when I would, I'm a Jesus and Mero super fan, and I would just like mm. have a marathon, but like I would watch their like back and forth banter like just for like hours, and then I would notice like when I'm talking to my friends the next day, I like picked it Extra. up, so I get exactly what you're saying. And I love that. I really, really love yeah. that, but I think... It's just so misogynistic, you know. Like I, I, feel, like, I feel like when I go there, I, just I know have to this like. Is, this is such a typical I'll, question. The fan base well, is misogynistic, or the fan base in the boys. Okay, 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 okay. See, now I've gotten better. Can I say but, something? Because I feel like as women, when we hear those types of comments, we're like, "What the fuck? That was mad fucked up." But to men, <laughs> it's no, hilarious. Not, no, 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 not you guys. Not, like shows like that. Shows like that. Like certain things, and and like. I feel like when men, it hits their ears, they're like, okay, whatever. Like, it was very casual for them. But for us, we're just like, 
that was so like fucking rude and yeah. so like this is such a typical question but like how was it like because you're you're around a bunch of men music industry but like i feel like if you're the only girl in the room sometimes like you just need another girl to like for you know? sure that's why i said angie i didn't understand angie when i was first working with her like i'm like mm. why is she so hard like why is she being like that mm -hmm. but now i understand <laughs> you have to do that as a woman to get the respect because mm. these mm. niggas is nasty and crazy you know <laughs> what i mean but i think when it comes to like brilliant idiots I understand their humor. Like, I understand their personality. Now, yeah. So I'm not offended or anything like that. Mm. Like, I'll laugh, but I also will be like, all right, that's funny, but yeah, nigga, get it together. <laughs> like, and that adds to the yeah. show, though. Because yeah. you don't want to be like a Debbie Downer, yeah. but like, you're yeah. like... Do you ever feel bad for Taylor? <laughs> Yo, they be OD. They, 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 they be crazy. Like, I'll, I'll be yeah. empathizing for Taylor. They do that to Taylor all the time. I feel like Taylor Taylor likes it, I yeah. think. Okay. I won't know she doesn't. She really She's do be mad. But, <laughs> but I don't. she's still there, so you must. Yeah. It, yeah. It has yeah. to get used to it. Like, she'll be fine. You, got it. I don't know. It's been a long time. Oh. Y'all need to. But you said she likes it though. So. She got Tay Tay alone, yeah. man. Taylor's great. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Brilliant like, like, The Oompa Loompa jokes be getting me though. Like I, I be trying. They not call to her Oompa Loompa. Yeah, they be calling her Oompa Loompa. That's not guys. Nice. We can't do that. That's not. But nice. I will say we can't do that. Twenty twenty three. I will guys. say some That's of my nice. favorite moments is when Taylor claps back. I was yeah. just about to say that. She will oh, okay. clap. I love the fuck when she start turning up and she just can't breathe no more. Yeah. Because she just been torturing her ass up. I'd be like, yeah, Tay Tay. Fuck them up. <laughs> yeah, T -T. You too. I like when you do that. Because yeah. even though their viewership is probably largely men, right. it's important to have another perspective right. in the room sure. that's going at them, yeah, which, sure. which makes them open up as to why they're speaking and they feel the way they feel. Their comment know? section is so nasty, man. It is. They be like, it either man. be like, she look good, but I don't want her to talk. Or oh, like it, they're just Yo, niggas be making us look bad, bro. I don't oh, like that. Well. They do. Yeah, they do. I will say I was I not think referring that's how to that. I would like act too if y'all wasn't. In Not, never. the roles that y'all are in. What, what do you mean? Like, if you guys weren't in the, like, in the limelight, you would probably be the same nope. way. If you, no had a, if you had a regular no job, wait, wait, they, would, they, they would act like what? They no would act like what? They would be commenting on shit online. No, like, like, no, no, I'll tell you. No, these guys, no. I have to, I have to defend them. No. I have to defend Thank them. Like, they... They are not like that. Okay. Like they're they're definitely we just are, like okay. they're not incels. They're right. anti incel. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. At when least I, these. Yes. These when are, I yeah. see those niggas, I want to beat them up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we get along. For real. Okay. Like, we like cool. women. Yeah. Yeah. These niggas don't be liking women. Yo, they really don't be <laughs> liking like women. women. That is a fact. We enjoy women. But it's so funny because you can <laughs> see the difference between like um, yeah. Charla's fan base and Schultz's. What's the difference? You you can just tell in the comments. The, there's who's, a difference. Who's his They're, fan? And who, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, like a certain type of person. Certain like <laughs> certain things they resonate with, like certain things they like. They comment they about. Like, I yeah, get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, damn. Like when Schultz is not there, the comments versus when he is there. The mm. different. Very different. I'm gonna pay I haven't paid attention to that. Like, even <laughs> as a fan, Hell, I haven't even really. Even the Reddit, yeah, the Reddit for the Reddit Brilliant Idiots crazy. is crazy. The Reddit is a lot. Actually, Reddit Brilliant Idiots is the only reason why I have Reddit on my phone is to see <laughs> what be going <laughs> on. Is that entertaining though? And the Joe Budden podcast is the reason why I have Reddit. Yes. Oh really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, got, I haven't checked it, that. It got dangerous. I don't, I don't think I want to. Yeah. It got <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> that is is it's a lot. I gotta ask you this, and I'd be remiss if I didn't. Mm -hmm. How how much attention do you pay? to like the whole podcast wars thing. And when I say podcast wars, obviously there's a lot of, you know, personalities, people in the space where there may be a little bit of tension or there may be a little bit of friction or there, yeah. there's some shots thrown at each other and it's like, ooh, damn, nigga, why you say that? Mm -hmm. Like how much of that do you, you know, consume your time with, pay attention to? Not much. I'm not, as I told you, once I see a bad comment, I get off. I love so that. like, I don't really... Yeah, she's an unbothered queen, you know? But I, 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 I'm I, aware of what yeah, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yes, yes, okay. yes. But okay. I don't... That was a real, you know, she's media trained, you know? You're not going to get her. Even... No, that was a real question. <laughs> no, I could feel that was real. That's not even media trained. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm aware of everything that's going on, but I personally don't yeah. give a fuck. I'm going to keep like, Because <laughs> yeah. honestly, it's, yeah. I don't <laughs> you're not interested. I'm just yeah, not yeah, interested. Yeah. And I just think like, some of the shit, like, y'all niggas is just too grown to be doing this. Okay. You I've know? said that most. I, I don't know why everybody's beefing for real. We, they, everybody getting money. Not Nyla to be the one to tell you guys. That. Not you guys, but, like, the people yeah. who are invested in this. Yeah. Like, can you just grow up? I, I just, <laughs> Cause, yeah. Because I really feel like I'm in no competition with anyone. Right. 
Because what we doing here is not gonna affect someone else's success. At all. That's not for me. The money I'm getting with this is not gonna affect the money you getting with that. And honestly, for me, so I never understood. It's like I would rather work with the people. Like like, that's why I was hitting y'all up to be on the show because I'm like, oh my god, you guys are in the industry. You talk about hip hop. I I want to be here because I feel like we have similar interests. For sure. For sure. And it's funny you say that because I look at somebody like Eden. Right. He works with Rory and Maul. We're like, yo, we love you to be at the mixer, DJ mm-hmm. party. We you, same thing. Yo, we love you to be like. There's just we money. don't we I, honestly <laughs> we don't care. We can't <laughs> afford to not <laughs> fuck with each other. Yeah, like yeah, in my yeah. opinion, like bro, yeah. I want to salute that. So I guess when you get to a different <laughs> level, like I'm not there yet, so it doesn't really affect me. Like it doesn't yeah. bleed into my relationships or my admiration for people right. who are building. But uh, it, it was important for me to ask that because again, we come from different trees. Like yeah. when people see Nyla, they're gonna say, "All right, Breakfast Club, Charlemagne, DJ Envy." When they see myself, they're gonna be, "Oh, Joe Budden, Rory, Mo, whatever it is you." associate us with and then to see us come together i think like it just sends a different message yeah but i, I also don't pay attention not just the podcast shit i don't pay attention to most shit mm-hmm. like i'm really in my own to world. keep yourself sane world. you have to do that yeah because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just not like i don't i at one point in time when i was working as like a writer and I had to like keep up and make headlines a certain way and this that, and shit. That shit fucked with my yeah. spirit. Like I was such oh, yeah, a yeah. negative takes, ass person. Yeah, it takes a toll on your mental health. So I don't give a fuck about the comments. I don't give a fuck about who beefing with what. I just give a fuck about like who's here with me supporting me. And I, sure. I just pour love into those who pour mm-hmm. love into me. That's about, choose that's peace about like it. Nyla that's guys. Fine. Yeah, yes. yeah, I love that. Look at not us, even trying to be like mid twenty people. Yeah, yeah, like just us. forming an alliance of peace. Let's let's do it. Yeah, do better, guys. Seriously, I love that. I love that. I'm not mad at that at all. Um, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, there is a segment on the podcast where we like to connect with our fans, connect with our listeners. Um, the two people that we're gonna listen to today, we felt it was very appropriate to have you on to kind of give them some feedback. So what we like to do is, um, if you want, please head over to our Patreon. You can connect with us directly over on Patreon. We kept it open all summer. If you missed out, Kieran, I'm letting you know live on air. Close that shit. Remove the link. <laughs> oh, this shit. is the last week that, that we're going to leave it over to the Ooh. public. No, we, legit. We told you guys for Because it's weeks. been out for a while, you know, yeah. and we got some really, really dope feedback. Yep. Um, some really dope, you know, listeners and, and people who support us who want to hear insight on how to navigate the industry, how to navigate, you know, their, their personal relationship, love life, whatever it is please make sure y'all connect with us over there on patreon um but nyla yes we saved two voicemails specifically for you they, they called in like to ask her this they did they yeah. did they they knew you were coming yeah. so yeah. we put on, on patreon on yeah. our patreon okay. we kind of give them a little bit of insight like hey we got this person coming we got that yeah. person and we knew we were going to make this happen for like the last two years right so <laughs> and we've been like promo okay. on this for like two years now. Like, yeah, we got the house pulling up. <laughs> and so these two folks they reached out to us and and so they're just gonna you know tell us tell us about their story and we can kind of respond Yo, what's up, guys? So, I got a question. Since y'all are music heads, do y'all think that male and female groups will ever be a thing again in the States like how they were in the 90s? I'm a big fan of K-pop, and I know over there, they're doing very well. So, why do y'all think we can't do the same and have the same success over here as they do over there? That is so funny that he mentioned K-pop. Shout out to you. Are you a big K-pop fan? I'm not because, but I, anything that I see Koreans being successful in, of course, I'm a, I'm a stan. But I'd be lying if I said so, like I listen to like K-pop. But okay. salute to K-pop because it's literally worldwide. Yeah. But I love yeah, that so too. groups. What do you think, Nyla? Why in like, America? I don't yeah. really know that. I don't know for specifically to America, but there's a few groups that I rock with right now. But they're like flow but they're like in london and i think they're all it's a women group that's yeah all they're like young girls was he saying men and women on that i mean he, I think said it was just he just said but there's another oh, one okay. wane they're like wane. The, yeah okay yeah um the sons of um boys men yes really um, wait 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 their sons <laughs> are in boy, a group yeah. yeah it's like four or five of them. and then there's a daughter that. who could sing her yeah. ass off are they really? doing well they came to the radio station that's why we well they're not like but they're they they're building. They're, they're building. building. Yeah, they yeah, can yeah, serenade yeah. a uh, girl. I yeah. believe it. Yeah, yeah. I got to tell Yo, Wanye is one of the like greatest vocalists ever. Ever. Yeah. He really is. Ever. And I feel like because he didn't <laughs> do the Justin Timberlake and like yeah. be, Leave do his own solo yeah, career, yeah. he doesn't get the credit he deserves. But even his bandmates, like his, his group, they like I saw Sean the other day. I don't know how my algorithm put Sean, Sean. in. Like he, he just popped up and he was like, look. 
guys, I'm an R&B guy. I was having a debate with my friends and I know I may be a little bit biased, but when it comes to that stage, when it comes to these vocals, Wanye is him. And then that led me down a rabbit hole of listening to all Wanye songs. Like, so I'm yeah. like, I bet. Right back. And then it made me remember like, oh yeah, he really is him. Yeah. Like his runs, his Finally, timing, some OG. his breath control. Like, <laughs> Wanye is him. Now, if Wanye would have sang a hip, uh huh, oh a hip to the hip, I might have been like, yo, you like the play. I would have been like, yo, Don't sing that shit to me, boy. Shout out to Wanye, bro. For real. You were doing good, man. God damn it. I think to answer his question really quickly, I think it's just too much ego. Yeah. In America. Um, way too much ego in America. Mm -hmm. um, especially with what's like pushed, right? Like the women are dominating the rap genre right now, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not saying it's being pushed. I'm saying that they have more of a voice right now. And they have some shit to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to like mixing groups and shit now, how can you do that if there's a certain narrative that wants to be pushed? I think it's too much of a narrative out here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're seeing duos, yeah. but I agree. Mm -hmm. a, lot a lot of ego. And also, I think, like, just historically from, like, our culture POV, all the groups had bad deals. Mm -hmm. Like, all the, all the big and groups. And that, that's what really, the, like, broke them apart. Yeah, yeah, they turned into drug addicts or went broke yeah. and Damn. did dumb stuff for money, you know, so. That was a great, great perspective. Yeah. So, for me, I thought it was just a money thing. It's like, now with TikTok and SoundCloud and just being able to upload your own music is like, all right, why would I want to bust down this music four different ways? Yeah. Now, granted, like, uh, I think we see it a lot in Omarion. Omarion, he moves, acts, and feels like I am the lead singer. Like, this is <laughs> like he does. Like, that's how a lot. Like, main character syndrome. Legit, he, I, I think from my perspective, he has main character syndrome. Yeah. Like, even Justin Timberlake. Yeah. I've been so excited to see NSYNC. I don't know about anybody else. Oh, my else. God. Did you guys see? They have been teasing no, no, no. Did you guys see the hot ones? I didn't. It came out. It came out. As the day we're recording Shout out it. to Sean Evans, my favorite Caucasian yes, person ever. Yes, that is. That is. Yes. But like even, <laughs> e NSYNC, even yes. somebody like a Omarion or a Justin Timberlake, I think they just, you know, the, the labels, whoever it is that empowers them to be that guy, yeah. um, I think it's just hard to kind of navigate that in a space where, you know, if I'm the background singer, like we see a ton of background singers who can be solo artists, yeah, right? For sure. And not only is it ego, but I also think it's like monetary, like the money doesn't allow for groups to really go Flourish. as far as they used to yeah. because like fam i could go get it on my own if i feel like i'm him mm -hmm. but the label thinks you're him like you're not him we're definitely in a me culture right now so yeah. i don't know yeah. sure. in a yeah. what culture yeah. me like a me like oh that's what i was about to say like i feel like especially america like we're so obsessed with like yeah. oh my god do they have that star power do they have mm -hmm. that equality so then naturally we're gonna always single out one person in the group yeah. instead of letting them all be like a group Together, so that definitely right. like psychologically that's why to answer the person's question like that's why it's not working in the u.s so, i agree, yeah. I agree let's get to this next one see what, what they're talking about yo this is jay now based in southern california originally from south side richmond virginia born and raised shout out the need to know podcast for being one of the best podcasts in the game right Thank now you. Thank super you. relatable as we're in the same Appreciate age that. demographic and shout out Savon for playing a great part in my media career as I interviewed him two years ago for right, a platform Savon, that I you. helped back in the Give day. Appreciate All that. of that okay. eventually helped me become a part of Dipset's PR team and nice. I work with other clients now. So my question is, how did y'all handle certain comments from friends when y'all grew into the music industry space and began to collaborate or be around industry folk like Reggie with Diddy, Alex with Sirius, Savon with Joe and HBO. Because I got comments in the past where people said that, oh, I'm Mr. Big Shot. Oh, I'm <laughs> Hollywood. Whenever I posted pictures with Gazi or Elliot or Albiel or IDK, the rapper, like, how did y'all handle names. comments from Yo, friends that great you grew up with promo calling you Hollywood <laughs> drop, or drop, pick some of saying <laughs> comments similar to that nature? Keep on doing what y'all doing. I appreciate it. Been a loyal fan for years. Peace. All right, Jay, Absolutely, I appreciate man. that. I ain't going to lie. I did have to bend, bend down and pick up some of them names you dropped. Yeah, yeah. But we, we got them. We here. They in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for tuning in. Um, and it's, 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 it's honestly, um, 
shout out to you salute to you for you know creating your own space and yeah. i do remember the interview that we did a few years ago and I, I i was very honored for your time because especially two years ago i had no idea that anybody ever wanted to interview me or talk to me or saw anything in, in me in that way so um the 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 fact that you were able to leverage that that says a lot about you so shout out to you for that um but when it comes to your question when you ask about how do we respond to people saying, hey, no friends that make the you're Hollywood or you're this or you're that. I think the, the, the main thing for me, and then I'm going to let everybody else go, but the main thing for me is like, you know, that's why you worked the way that you worked to put yourself mm -hmm. in a position for people to view you in a certain light. Yeah. You know, like you didn't work this hard to not be associated with success, mm -hmm. right? So when people project, hey, you're Hollywood or you're this or you're that, that's really internally because they see you going on a different path. And so for me, because I hear it, like one of my grandmothers, she sees me and she calls me Michael, right? Mm -hmm. She calls me Michael. My name, I have my middle name has nothing to do with Michael. My first name is Save. Like Michael is nowhere associated with me and who I am. But the Jackson Five, that was Michael Jackson. And so it's like, oh, we got Michael coming to dinner oh, today. Oh, hilarious. hey, Mike. Like that's just what it is. And they now my your grandmother brother Tito and shit. <laughs> your brother, I would never. That's what she I hope said. I them niggas snuff you. <laughs> <laughs> they fuck with you. Don't be so. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, Michael. I but love all them niggas. <laughs> I think it's a because I can't give my family and my friends the time yeah. that they were accustomed to, or because they see me taking a flight to LA and then mm -hmm. jumping off and then kind of recording the podcast. Like she just associates it with success. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's not a slight. Like, shout out to my grandmothers. I love them both dearly. Um, but it's one of those things where, like, your friends and the people around you, they just see you um, elevating and they don't really understand it in a way. So I would just take that as a compliment and continue to use that as a, a sign of manifestation that you got bigger things to come. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. You think, Nala? Well said. Uh, I agree with Savon. Didn't think that was gonna happen, but yeah. I, <laughs> I was waiting for it. Look, there's a That's reason why you're here. We just don't make it happen. <laughs> when I was in college, like my friends, I used to get home really, really late, like 10 p.m. And prior to me working in the music industry, like I used to like watch all the love and hip hops with my friends, and we make brownies and ice cream mm -hmm. and do oh, nice. our hair and talk about boys and stuff like that. <laughs> but once I got into like the industry, I would be so burnt out, come home, shower, go to sleep. Like, nah, you don't want to. I don't. I, I ain't want to do nothing because I was so like on That's a mission. Right. Yeah. And I think like locked in. I really self isolated when I started like. Not on purpose, but I ended up self-isolating when I started working in the music industry. And my real friends understood that and never made a comment like that. Exactly. Like, they would never make a comment like that. But that's if what anything everything is, in, I'm proud of you. That's what everything in life, like if you get into a new relationship, if you're like really busy, if you're traveling more, your real friends will never give you a hard time for that. Yeah. Like, so those people saying that, they're, I think they're just shocked that you're actually doing it. You know what I mean? Like my real friends would never be Absolutely. shocked. They're that's like, yeah, Nyla, you've been doing Absolutely. that. I'm proud that's of you. That's projecting, right? Because yeah. they're seeing you chase Absolutely. your dreams and they're a little insecure. So that's why they're making those comments. Like, because, okay, Hollywood. Yeah. If you were not insecure you would not say that type of shit to Nyla so yeah I love when they do that because I just stopped talking about them I just stopped talking <laughs> cool shit to them yeah all that cool shit that you think is so impressive I just shut it down mm. and they get so confused they just be like well you know yeah nah you're not for that you good that's why I don't really like and I don't not that like I fuck with people who support me don't take this the wrong way but I don't really like when they're like so who was your favorite interviewer? Like, what yeah. was the? What did she smell like? And it's like, bro, I don't give a fuck about none of that. Like, I'm just like, I'm a real person. Yeah, it's it's journalism to me, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, or yeah. it's like it's about the art. So if you want to ask me, like, was it an intense conversation when you asked about this thing? Cool, but don't ask me like. Just, oh, less about the name, but more about like, oh, what was your experience like? Like, you want to yeah. talk about it? Like, like they just be like, oh my god, what is Megan the Stallion smell like? It's like, oh. nigga, I don't what what type of. <laughs> That's a horny shit. nigga. Get him out your circle. Get that nigga out your circle, bro. What does she like, smell like? It's 2023. Don't be asking those questions. I'm just bro. saying. It just be yeah. So that's my opinion. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I know you. Are, um, I know you gotta get out of here soon, but I gotta ask you this. We gotta argue a little bit about music. Okay. okay. I, I know you. I know you a J Cole fan. Stan. Uh huh. I was just about to ask if you was a fan or a Stan. You gonna put your Stan card on for his last few Her features? Her whole life went in this trajectory because of J. Cole, because of his college story. That, mm. I, that's real sweet. We got two J. Cole stands. <laughs> that's real sweet. That's real sweet. Because she is J. Cole too. Y'all gonna be mad oh, at don't me. Don't make it awkward. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, how y'all feel about J. Cole's uh, uh, feature run as of recent? I like it. 
You yeah. like All My Life all, with, uh, with Lil Lil Durk? Nah, that was cool. What about I the, don't like it. What about the Boss joint? Passport Bros? Yeah. What about uh, that joint? You feeling that one? Well, I just wanted to say, I was never a Lil Durk fan, but I oh. listened to All My Life. And I love all my life. But it's you do? Now, look, now, look. now you know damn well. Right. It's because of Cole's verse, but. <laughs> you know that's graduation music. You know that's stepping up music. It is. Everybody got one. Nas yeah. got, I know, I can't. Yeah, it's, uh, you gotta have one in your catalog. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. She I, said she, uh, she, she no, felt betrayed. She, <laughs> she said, "Wait, oh no!" Like not the Nas song sounds good in that spirit, but then like with all my life. No, actually, let me take it back because I was talking to my coworker. To be fair, it's not Cole's record. No, no, yeah. yeah. No, to, to be oh, fair, she can Yo, it's mad niggas that don't know about music She's, on the pod. Chill, yeah, it's not oh, just no, me. No, no, no. Like the little Dirk song. Like I, I automatically thought it was like graduation music, but yeah, yeah. I was talking to my coworker and his little like cousin, the eight year old cousin, mm-hmm. is obsessed with that song. So, I'm just like you know what it's not for me I love Cole's verse but the song is I, not I feel for like me. the only way to enjoy that is like with pizza and orange soda oh my god <laughs> Yo, it has a really good message uh, it has a really right. good it message does, it does it does uh-huh. down to my J. Cole fandom cause I think this Stand-dom. is fandom yes but people need to understand is like I can still stand somebody, love somebody, and, and be critical. Yeah. So, like, mm. you know, the records that you buy the name, mm. I might not love these verses. Just, like, there's also. plenty of J. Cole records I don't love. But what he has done and inspired me to do for my life is why yeah. I stand him. I see what you're saying. So, mm. I'm not about and to that's why we're every ever verse. Like, yeah, you can. like, this is a week, because the Jackie Robinson record, fuck the Passport Bros. I'll take Passport Bros over that Jackie Robinson shit. That shit Word. pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> I hated oh, that record, but yeah. that boss shit pissed me the fuck off. <laughs> Have you had a chance but, to meet J. Cole? Yeah, I love yeah. Cole. several times. How, and, Every time how was I had, that like interaction? We met, um, I met him when him and Angie did that their second interview. Okay. I met him then, then I met him at Ari Lennox listening party, and then I met him again at Dreamville Fest. Okay. And. Yeah, usually I just say, hey, what's up? Because I don't want to be yeah, weird. weird. Like, mm-hmm. I can't be like, yo, you don't know, but you're hard. <laughs> you just, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like, that's, I did that one time. You changed you my did life. That? I ain't gonna lie, I that's did that so one time. That's so creepy. That's so creepy. No, no, no. <laughs> like, why would you just listen? We need Nyla on the podcast. Just hear me out. Nyla, funny. She'd be calling me out. Yeah, she'd be like, Savon, you're why weird. But I, like, did it, I did it to an R&B singer. That's the other thing. But listen, just hear me out. Who was it? Just hear me out. Who he look like? Just hear me Who was it? Hear me out. His so, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was, was I was produ- I was helping produce an interview, right? <laughs> and the morning of that interview, Look at him. the news <laughs> that Pop Smoke was killed in LA had just started circulating. Okay, I was in a very sentimental space. I know. I was really <laughs> reflecting, like, yo, damn, this could really be it. This could be our last you, day on this you, earth. Mind you, see, he's crazy. Kobe like. had just passed a few months ago. Okay. So there's just I do mad, remember that time period. I do remember his mad death. Mad and crazy. maybe a, a year ago, I was in LA when Nipsey got killed. Mm. So they just it was a That's run. A lot going on. It was like Nipsey. Uh, Juice World, Kobe, Pop Smoke, all within our culture yep. in a short amount of time, right? So we had an interview. This was when Joe was doing his one on one interviews with artists, and he did an interview with Neo. And I had a moment where I feel like I shouldn't have did that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, now, in that ass, you, like, you, you did it with Neo. <laughs> See, I love what? the self-awareness. So what did sick. you say? <laughs> did you just watch him like, I see what you did But let me give you one more. Let me what give you, you that nigga say? was so sick. Let me give you a little bit more context. <laughs> Please. So we filmed this interview at the Kimberly Hotel. <laughs> In, yeah. in New York City, Kimberly Hotel. Oh, my shit. mother's first name is Kimberly. Oh, come on. So the universe was speaking to my soul. Oh, my God. Like, 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 I had this to get moment. it off. I'm like, time. wait, yeah. niggas is dying and shit. Like, oh, we in the I Kimberly. Get this off. <laughs> like, wait, my hairline is back here <laughs> too. Like, wait, <laughs> my nigga the... pulled up. I had to get I it off in that moment. Way. So do I get a little bit of pass for that? Like, just uh, a little bit of leeway? Because our Nothing. Nah. If nah. not, then, nah. nah. I shouldn't have did that shit. Nah. Yeah, that it. was, yeah. I you gotta up. keep it cool. <laughs> I don't know where that came I couldn't. Cool. I, I, Wait, what, I was was his, uh, what was his, what was his reaction? Oh, what was his reaction, Savon? I mean, he's a great guy, so I, he just took it in oh, yeah, No, he actually what invited us to his listening party, which Alex attended. He I only was. did that because of who you was with. Definitely not because That's a fact. Oh, no, for oh, sure. That, was, that was, fan and out shit would not have gotten you invited. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want nobody listening to think, like, yo, if I tell somebody, they don't give a fuck about that. He yeah. did it, probably. <laughs> Some people like that shit. Like Lady Gaga, she loves when her fans tell her. Really? Sorry, I just watched the video. That's why I just said that. Sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, everyone was like, what? But yeah, I just want to know your experience with J. Cole. That's you I, gotta do it though because what, tell him? at some point you have to I think that it's been told to him 
by mutuals by enough. Like I'm cool mm. with Eve. But y'all like standing I'm on cool your with- shit. Huh? Like a real nigga? You don't like standing First on your own? I'm always standing. Ah, you talk okay. crazy now. Standing on business yeah, nah. is standing on business. Come on, oh, now. Hey, now let's stay but, there. I like that. But I think when it comes to, I don't know, I just, I don't do the fan and out shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody that, I'm just not doing it. But I'm a fan, you've, in, you've mm-hmm. inspired me and that's just what it is. I, I like doing that. that, like giving people the flowers, which is Savon's point. But I like doing that not when I just randomly run into them. But let's say, like J Cole, if we sit down for an interview, then, then we could sense. talk. Like with Elliot Wilson, we all love him. So like when he sat down with us for an interview, we were able to give him his flowers straight yeah. like See, that. So. That's how it's supposed to be. Because I, I feel like <laughs> yeah. no, for real. Because I feel like like in the universe, like the even the way I went to that school that I met Angie through that, Angie through that, and et cetera. I think like the time will come. We're reviving, and yeah, then it'll no, come. yeah. But just I fully coming up, that. it's like I don't know. It feels weird to me. I'm just yeah. not. Especially because we're in the industry, we can't cool, do that. Bro. It's not even about you being that. You can't be a real nigga all the time. <laughs> yes, you can. No, no. It's, it's <laughs> actually I can show. Like, yeah, you can't be a real nigga all the time, No, watch this. No, the definition. You gotta let that shit. You've been there for five years. What we're saying is the phrase like "act like you've been here before." That's what we're saying. Like not you, but just everybody. Niggas was dying. Niggas was dying. Niggas died every day. Don't be me. Who would you call on during the pandemic? You probably went through yeah. everybody. Yo, <laughs> yeah, I mean, all my exes like, that album yo, did. that shit fucked <laughs> me up. Right. The same way that that shit oh. hit you, it hit me. Like, well, okay. I want to say, <laughs> you guys are really dope. Thank you guys for having me on the podcast. And wait, 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 wait. Damn, I ain't never had nobody rap my shit up. And, Damn, that's crazy. And, hold and, up. And, she gotta go. <laughs> and really, <laughs> really good questions. I, I figured you're going to ask me some things. And I was like, you know what? But. A good job on exiting. Because then, then I thought you weren't going to exit. No, no, no. One last one, though. One last one. I know you're about to cut. Does Drake need a rap album before he retires? I want to hear it from you. I'm, I'm hating this discourse and this conversation I'm seeing online. Me he personally, just dropped a rap me, album. No, he didn't because no, people are saying he was singing on it. People, what was people are no, looking. With 21 Savage. No, no, no. uh. He was singing on it. People are looking for like a full okay. rap okay. album. Full body and I don't think that he needs it. I think he's already shown us that he could do both. Yeah, I don't think he needs it. I, oh, really? I think all the young OGs, Drake, Cole, Kendrick, Meek, Wiz, Nip, Dom. Big Sean. Wale. Big Sean, Wa- oh, Wale. Yeah. <laughs> I think all, all of them are like already goaded. They don't have anything left to prove. To prove so whatever they're that. doing is just, they're just, just shits and giggles we, that they already yeah. like proved I it I but it. I feel like the only thing that will keep them going obsessively if they haven't proved it to themselves yeah. but for us you guys you proved it Just... for me with Drake I don't give a fuck if you rap sing dance but oh, what I want is for him to like rap about something other than women like we crying just, about women. Like but, I wanted to hear you and your dad bag. I want to hear you in love. Like not, I want to hear. He's not on that right now. You he's not in love right now. But where are you at? Find for the dogs. It. Roo, roo. Yeah. <laughs> for the dogs. Nigga, it's been about the dogs for the past twenty years since <laughs> I bet it? you it's been about the he dogs. Been a dog for twenty years. You can't relate because you and Alex not real niggas. Yo, fuck wow, out of here, nigga. Wow, real wow. niggas. That's what I heard. <laughs> Don't make us jump you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My thing with Drake is like, yo, nobody could do what he could do, but he could do what they could do. So why the fuck? Why the fuck do we need a rap album from him? I don't think we need a rap album. We need nothing. Yeah, I like that. Not mad at it. Yeah. Mm. If All it's right. Stan from Nyla, it's Stan. Yeah, yeah. Because that's Ooh. a real music head, yeah. unlike but, myself. But definitely give us something <laughs> else. <laughs> give us something else. Yeah. For sure, right. for sure. Like thank it. you for pulling up to the nah, podcast. We yeah. really, Thanks. for real, we yeah, really appreciate you. this. Have to do this again. Legit. Please, thanks for having me. I'm always down to come I argue. I hope so. Um, I know you're on like all these major, major platforms, but for the people who rock with us, if you want to let them know where they can find you, that would be awesome. Please subscribe <laughs> to my YouTube channel <laughs> and um, follow my podcast at WNTTLK. It's We Need to Talk. It's an interview series where I interview upcoming artists and you know, just influencers, things of that nature. But then also catch me on Amazon Music's Twitch every Wednesday with Rob Markman, Speedy, and Gay P, where we do like hip hop news of the week type vibes. And wow. then catch me every Friday on the Breakfast Club doing Pass the Ox, putting you on to all my favorite joints right now, artists who you should be checked in with. Even if it's like old or new, we kind of cover both. I love it. That's what's up. Yeah. That was, Thanks, you no. know, just a calm flex. Calm flex. You light flex. <laughs> I, like, I told Jay to pick the names up. I'm about to tell you to pick all of them. <laughs> Yo, hold up. Pick that off the floor. No, congratulations to you. Absolutely. Shout out to you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you again for being on the podcast. We are fans of you. We can't wait to see and, and, and uh, watch and witness yeah. to continue to see you build and do what it is that you do. Absolutely. So thank you so much. We appreciate you. Same here. With that being said, if you are this far in the podcast, there's no reason you're not subscribed to us. There's no reason you're not subscribed to Nyla. You 
you know, one day I'm gonna give you my personal Instagram, but for now, you can just follow the Need to Know Pod. So, <laughs> yeah. Yo, don't do that. You I'm trying to sell. Bio. Nah, I gotta promote me too, though. Because I love me, because y'all niggas know. But it's the Need to Know Podcast. This is what you need to know, when you need to know. God willing, we will be back again next week. Peace out, y'all, gang.